Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Sign him up for the Box of Bait Club and he'll never be hungry again. The Box of Bait Club is a brand new dream come true for every fisherman. Something new and different in your tackle box every month. Every month, another excuse to get outside and do what you love. Don't let this one get away. The Box of Bait Club is currently accepting a limited number of free orders with subscriptions starting at $39.95 per month. Find out more now. Log on to boxofbaitclub.com. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich? Working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare? Having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to freedom133.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to freedom133.com right now and change your life today. That's freedom, the number 133.com. Go to freedom133.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to (laughs) freedom133.com. Attention business owners, we know that owning a business means getting things done right now. So if your right now list includes a new building, call the right now company. General Steel. We can design a building for your business quickly and save you thousands of dollars. That's right, thousands. You may think General Steel only builds large projects or that you can't afford General Steel quality. Well, check these prices. How about a 40 by 60 foot building for under $22,000 or even a 50 by 100 for under $35,000? That's right, a 5,000 square foot building for under $35,000. And these buildings all have General Steel quality. Best of all, you can still order a building and have it delivered in time to build this year. How's that for right now so if your right now list includes a new building call the right now company general steel 800-393-5756 800-393-5756 800-393-5756 that's 800-393-5756 Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800 595 2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595 2614 to take your call now. Call 800 595 2614. That's 800 595 2614. Again, 800 595 2614. 
Uh, boy, man, I had a rough night's sleep. Uh, boy, Whew. I got a letter from the IRS yesterday, and I, I just couldn't sleep. Man, my, I'm dying here. Somebody help me. IRS problems affect more than just your finances. If you're ready to take back control of your life and you owe more than $10,000, you need to call the tax doctor. Their expert staff can immediately protect you from the IRS and state collectors and get you the best possible tax settlement guaranteed. The IRS has recently released new programs geared in helping struggling taxpayers, where you may qualify to settle your tax debt and wipe out up to 85% or more of what you currently owe. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, call the tax doctor right now. See if you qualify to pay less. 800-989-1694. 800-989-1694. 800-989-1694. Again, 800-989-1694. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Good morning, my fellow Americans and my fellow Ecclesiastites all around the globe. It is I, your lovable host, Elrod, coming to you live from my bunkerized home studio somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is still live free or die, and it, it is still the motto. Yes, not only did I check today, but last night uh, I actually heard on the radio, on the news, uh, local news, here that they were trying to get and i knew this but they were trying to get the um the motto live free or die taken off of their our license plates now originally the first license plates here in new hampshire when they had a motto put on it uh new hampshire said scenic and you've got some ultra liberal democrats here many of whom i might add are not native to this state they are not and they didn't like, it just sounds so harsh to say live free or die. It's not very friendly. I think, you know, I've gone all over the place in this country. I mean, I've been to many places. And every place I go, everybody loves that we have the motto, live free or die. They love it. I mean, they love it for different reasons, but they do. Not, not a single person has said, well, that's kind of harsh, isn't it? No, they, everybody thinks it's great. So why is it that these liberals think that we should change our motto? Not only change the state motto, but at least, if we can't do that, at least take it off of our license plates. I mean, that's the dumbest thing ever. But it was soundly and uh, resoundly defeated. Uh, but but uh, trust me, it does not mean that these idiots are not going to try again. But we're fighting to keep it. So right now, it is still live free or die. And it will be live free or die, at least until we elect another ultra-liberal idiotic governor. And I'm sure they'll try again. In the meantime, the call-in number this uh, Friday morning, Friday, January the 29th in the year of our Lord, 2016, is 603-835-3224. Again, that's 603-835-3224. Fridays, as you know, or if you're tuning in for the first time, um, then you don't know. So I will tell you. But Fridays, as you know, it is what we call uh, a Freedom Friday. And that's simply because we're, yes, it's Freedom Friday, because we're out there uh, trying to get into the weekend and, and enjoy our freedom, what little freedom we still have remaining, right? So let's hear a cheer for that. Yeah, I got some great stuff going on today. You know, and you know, we really want to kick this off right for enjoying Enjoying the, the freedom that we have. Uh, last night, the debate, well, lack of a debate, if you want to call it that, and Trump doing what he did. Uh, there are a lot of people that think that 
Uh, Trump is it killed himself, but guess what? It didn't. So if you're one of those people who doesn't like Trump, or if you're one of those people who does like Trump, then yesterday was probably good for you. Because, of course, Trump was, um, you know, being Trump. So many of you who dislike Trump thought that this was ju- just the way he was going to be, and this is who he is, and it shows him for who he is, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to just, tr- Trump has trumped himself. And those of you who do, do like Trump, man, you are out there touting, yeah, Trump is his own man. Nobody can tell Trump what to do, man. He just throws down on the lamestream media. Uh, you know, it, Trump is, yeah, Trump, Trump them. So if you're of the hate Trump crowd, you think Trump trumped himself. If you're of the love Trump crowd, you think Trump trumped uh, Fox and the lamestream media. So both sides win. So this is why we're playing the Stars and Stripes forever, because both sides win today here on the Rod Eccles Show. If you've got something that you'd like to talk about, see, Freedom Fridays is all about, well, you. You can talk about just about anything you want. Uh, Just keep it clean, please. Uh, It doesn't have to be something that we're talking about right now. Uh, It doesn't have to be anything that that even I'm interested in or even know anything about. Uh, It just has to be clean. You can talk about anything. Anything you want other than, you know, dirty stuff. Um, 603-835-3224. Today is all about the listener, if the listener should wish to call. You know, and I get, see, I knew this was going to happen. People were going to claim that only, that I'm a Trumpster. Because only Trump people are calling in, and I'm, and, and and they were trying to take me to task on this stuff yesterday on social media. I'm like, well, nobody else is calling. You know, I think I've had one Cruz supporter call through this whole, this whole month. I've had one crew. Everybody else has been Trumpsters. Uh, oh, I've had. Some, I think I had somebody that that liked Rand Paul as well. But I mean, the, the, look, your candidate, if your candidate of choice is sucking in the polls. He's sucking in the polls because you're silent. I don't know how often I got to say that. That's that's just the facts. Look at look at the candidates who are at the top and look at their supporters. Not only who's getting the most pressed coverage from the lamestream media, but who's getting the most call-ins from people listen to any talk show that takes calls. And well, unless unless you're listening to you know the individual channel, this is this is the Rand Paul channel, or this is the Ted Cruz channel, or this is the Marco Rubio channel, or this is the Jeb Bush channel, or the Chris Christie channel. If you're not listening to a specialized channel like that, or this is the Libertarian channel, well, they're they're all probably going to go for Ted or Rand. Uh, but listen to the mainstream, if you will, uh, top ten talk shows. They all take calls. Listen to who calls in. The vast majority of those people are Trump and Cruz supporters. The rest of you are silent. Now, maybe that means they're just maybe maybe that's why one of the reasons why they're so low in the polls because there just isn't anybody out there supporting the rest Give of the field. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. But understand, Sign the reason why nobody else is supporting them be is because the, box of the people out there who are dream come true for every fisherman. Something new and different. Who, who don't know? Every month, every month. What's going on there? Just skip to something. Uh, the reason why all of you people do not hear a lot from the other candidates is because the supporters aren't out there talking about them. You got supporters from Trump and Cruz that are all over the place. Well, I mean, it, it, obviously Trump. Actually, I think lately the Cruz people have gone silent. What, what's up with that? Don't I don't hear as many Cruz supporters on the other other uh, networks, other shows as I used to. What are are you guys falling away? Are you not supporting Cruz now? What what's going on with that? Just wondering. But basically, if you want to have your candidate be at the top of the heap, you can't keep him a secret. No, 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 no. I don't want to tell anybody who I'm supporting. No, no, I'm going to keep it to myself. Uh, Why would you do that? 
I, I'm truly keeping it to myself only because I haven't made a decision yet. I really haven't. I mean, I, I, I can. I'm not. Even, I'm not going to tell you who I'm leaning towards, but uh, um, y- you might be surprised. Some of you might be surprised. And some of you out there, you'll probably accuse me of, you know, uh, look, I, I've been accused of a lot of things, but, and being unfair is one of those things I've been accused of. But I can tell you that I'm a fair person. I'm open-minded and I pay attention. I pay attention, which is all that I ask of anybody else out there is just to pay attention. I'm not saying pay attention to me, although you should, because you'll be much smarter and brighter. Uh, by the end of this program than you were before the program. Just saying. I mean, it's true. I'm not patting myself on the back, just stating a logical fact. Because I, I, I put forth logic and common sense. And I cause people to think. And whenever a person thinks, they're, if they truly do think, they're usually better off for it. Now, I know people will say, well, this person thinks, and, uh, and, and then they point to a TV show. Can I, you know, it is kind of, it's the old, how can I put this? The joke of the airhead is dead. Can, can we put that, can we put that, it, it is not cool to be stupid. I know it was, it's been going on for so long now, it's cool to be stupid or it's cool to be an airhead. I, no, it's not. And um, one of the episodes, and I, I didn't watch any last night, but one of the episodes of Happy Endings, well, one of the, uh, the, one of the characters in Happy Endings, you know, the typical, she's a blonde. Uh, And she actually, I think they color their hair to be that blonde, but she's a blonde and she's kind of plays the, uh, you know, the, the younger sister of a very smart, controlling sister blonde and, but she's the airheaded blonde. And yeah, she is funny, but there was an episode where she decided that she was not going to be an airhead anymore. So she was going to read and pay attention and watch important and intelligent stuff and she started to get smarter and smarter throughout the course of the half hour program and i gotta tell you i actually liked her better then but then she threw a a uh, an intellectual party where these high people uh actually put her down for for quoting freud <laughs> oh freud is so 19th century darling get with it will you And that made her decide that, well, I don't like being smart anymore. I'm just going to go back to being an airhead. Uh, Well, that's, that's, it was funnier when she was smart. You know, smart comedy is funnier than dumb comedy. Sure, there's something called slapstick comedy, but I get it. I'm just, I cannot, it's very difficult to watch dumb comedians now and and they're they're typically uh you know of the of the comedies or even the dramedies but it's just it's it's terrible we have played that to death and now it is at the point where so many people especially young people think that it is so cool to be dumb they don't know anything and they're proud that they don't know anything I mean, you go into a high school, and I, I know, I know, we've always probably had, had you know, the bookworm, the smart kid. You know, they've always been probably most of the time they're the quiet one, the shy one, the nerdy one. Doesn't matter what generation you are, if it's this generation or the past ten generations. There's all you know, and, and they and they got they often got picked on. I understand that, but when it came right down to it. When you got the valedictorian and salutatorian and you're sitting in there on graduation day in high school, everybody looked up to the smart people. You know, the ones that got the straight A's. The ones that got the 4.0. And there's, I just heard something that there's a, there's a, you can get better than a 4.0. I thought 4.0 was like A+. Plus. That was it. You got everything right. 100%. That was a, no, no, Rod. There's something new. You can get a 4.2 now. How the hell do you get a 4.2? 
Oh, it's extra credit. Wait. You're putting extra credit on top of the A+. You can't get you you can't do you can't get better than an A+. What what is this? Oh, well, and this is coming from the the liberal left who supposedly says they don't like competition in keeping score. Well, they do it so they can separate the smart ones from the really smart ones because they all think that they're smart. So now some of the smart ones that think that they're really smart and smarter than the smart ones thought that they were going to be able to separate themselves from the smart ones because they were really smart by showing that they were really smart because they got better than the 4.0. Did you follow that? But today we have this, uh, we have this notion that, that dumb is cool, being ignorant is fantastic, Hey, dude, man, you know, yeah, I don't know about anything in the world. Just chill, man. Who cares anyway, right? Well, at some point, you're going to care. Ignorance kills. Now, let me be serious for, for, for a mo- un momento. Ignorance kills. False intelligence kills. You think you are so smart so you can do just about anything you want is going to get you killed. Thinking that being dumb is so cool and that you're so ignorant that you don't know anything or much about anything about anything in life is going to get you killed. You can look at YouTube and see all these stupid stunts that not just high schoolers but college students, supposedly smart college students do. That... Half of them are probably going to be dead before they're 40. And I know some people are out there saying, well, yeah, just at least it cleans the gene pool. No, it's too late. You know, once they're 13, they could probably father children, and they probably do once they hit 17 or 18. The gene pool is continuing. The point is, is you've got to get stupid early. and It's like stupidity is like a disease. You've got to catch it early. It's like, I'm going to say it's like cancer. Cancer can kill you if you don't attend it. But you can save, be saved from death from most cancers. Stupidity and ignorance will kill you. But the sooner you get it and the sooner you treat it, the more likely are you are going to live. We see it all the time. People do stupid stuff and it kill, literally it kills them, puts them six feet under. And, you're, and you look at this stuff, you see it on the news, they even put it on YouTube sometimes, or you see it in, in some news feed, and you, sit, and you wonder, what the hell were they thinking? Well, that's the point. They weren't. They weren't thinking at all. Some of them don't even know how to think. There's, I had a story yesterday in my paper pile. Uh, New York City students, New York City kids, I mean, this is how dumb were many New York City students. Uh, Yesterday's paper pile. Many New York City students can't even sign their own name. But the New York Post is putting a, a, a tweak to make it sound like it does. It's not so bad. The actual headline from the New York Post yesterday was many New York City students so tech orientated they can't even sign their own names. No. They're trying to put a positive twist on those children's stupidity. The truth is, many New York students so ill-educated, they cannot sign their name. Now, where do you think those kids are going to be? I don't care if they can use a computer or a cell phone, smartphone. Where do you think they're going to... Half of them are going to end up in the streets, you know, running drugs, being part of gangs... And then by the time they're 30, they won't even reach it. They'll be dead. Being serious. I mean, this is just, this is awful stuff. You can't run around in this world. You just can't run around this world uh, and, and, be ignorant and expect to survive or even um, 
or e- even to, to get better, you know, to live. It's called survive. You just can't do it. When was the last time you saw an 80 or 90 year old airhead that wasn't a TV show character? I'm just, just asking. I, I don't, I don't ever recall seeing one. Think about it. But at the same time, there is such a thing as being too smart for your own good. You can be too smart for your own good. Because you think you know everything, at least about a particular subject, and you won't listen to anybody else because, after all, you know more than they do. Right? You know, the intellectuals. And the reality is, is you really don't know as much as you think you do. You know, they always talk about uh, a low self-esteem. You know, people with low self-esteem. Let me tell you something. People, there are more intelligent people that have low self-esteem. That is why they have to believe that they're smarter than you. Because unless they're better than you at something, then they feel that they're worthless. I know it's a bunch of bunk, but this is what some of these people think. This is why they have to treat you so poorly. Oh, your IQ is only 140. Please. Neanderthal level. Frankly, this is the liberal, the, the leadership, the liberal leadership. This is how they, watch how they act. Listen to how they talk. Watch how they treat other people. Watch how they treat you. They think, look at Obama. He thinks he knows what's best because he thinks he knows more than you. He thinks he's smarter than you. And of course, there he surrounds himself with people that, that, that say, oh yeah, Obama is the smartest president we've ever had. The highest IQ we've, that he's, a, and, and I, 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 look, I've heard a number of different people on, on both sides of the political aisle talk about how Obama's IQ is not very high at all. Now, I don't know if it is or isn't. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter how high your IQ. You know, IQ does not uh, necessitate intelligence. Your intelligence, it's a misnomer. Your intelligence quotient um, really has nothing to do about your knowledge of anything. Your IQ simply states, or what it's really simply telling you, is that your ability to learn certain things. It's about your ability to learn. Now, some people, because they they are smart, they have an IQ, it is easier for them to learn about stuff. It may be harder for some people. You know, you want to learn, I don't know, astrophysics. Well, somebody with a higher IQ is going to have an easier time of learning astrophysics versus somebody who has a lower IQ or an average IQ. But does that mean that the person with the lower or average IQ can't learn the same thing that the person with the high IQ? Uh, No. Of course, the person with the low IQ can learn, learn all that stuff. It's good, probably just going to take them longer to grasp it, but they'll still be able to learn it if they put their mind to it. So your IQ doesn't necessarily make you smarter. I mean, it's what you do with it that that intelligence that counts, or that uh, intelligence ability that counts. It's not about how smart you think you are. It's about how intelligent you really are. And frankly, you know, some of these so-called high IQ people are some of the dumbest people I have ever met or heard. Really? I don't know. Just think about it. Do you know a smart person? How smart do you think that smart person is? A lot of them aren't really smart at all, if you ask me. But who knows? Maybe I'm not as smart as I think.
On January 21st, 9 p.m., controversial international rapper-songwriter Corey Preem will be performing his latest single, Blame It On My Mama, from his latest mixtape, There's Heaven and Then There's Hell. Hip-hop royalty will be in attendance, and a special guest is expected to stop in for a performance. It all happens at the Jerome at 85 Avenue A, New York, New York. Tickets just $15. Say Blame It On My Mama at the door to possibly win a free pair of Samsung Oculus Rift virtual reality glasses. Visit CoreyPreem.com for more information. That's C-O-R-E-P-R-E-M-E.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay 15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. Start training for a new career in as little as 18 days. National EMS Institute's innovative boot camp program will train you for a new career. Learn to respond to emergency situations and become a certified EMT in just 18 days. National EMS Institute guarantees 100% job placement. Visit www.nationalemsinstitute.com today to learn more about our 18-day boot camp. Or call us at 1-800-497-6732. National EMS Institute. When you're ready to take the edge off a hectic day, I suggest you start with a little music from Franz Black. I guess there's lots of ways to look at things that don't seem right. No Worries has just been released on iTunes and Amazon. It's gonna be alright. You can find Friends Black and his music on his website, friendsblack.com. F R A N Z Black.com. It's gonna be alright.
Welcome back. It is I, your lovable host, coming back to you live from my Bunkerized home studio. The number that you can call the Rod Echo Show live this morning is 603-835-3224. Your wonderful new morning routine. As we get down to, this is the last Friday of the month. Can you believe it? The month of January, the first month of the new year, 2016, is now basically done. Unbelievable. It's just how time is flying. I can't, this, this week would just flew by. I, I can't believe it's already Friday. You know, it's one, one of the great things. I, I, I really consider myself to be extremely fortunate. Uh, and that is I get to do something like this and, and, and other things for a living that I absolutely and truly love doing. So it's a lot of people, they spend seven days, you know, seven days of the week is our full week. You know, it doesn't matter who you're rich or poor or anywhere in between. You got seven days in a week like everybody else. But they spend five days out of seven looking forward to only two. That that's that's actually pretty sad. You know, they 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 well, and even then, they're not even really happy about that. You know what people are happy about? It, and it's and they've done studies on this, I guess, because the smart people have done some studies. And what they found out is that um, the majority of heart attacks in this country. And it happened in a, uh, in a in a 12-hour window of between 6 p.m. Sunday evening and 6 a.m. Monday morning. I, I Now, this is what I've heard. I don't know if that's absolutely true. Or maybe it's some people who want to shorten the week or, you know, have some sort of other agenda. But uh, the, the, I guess it wouldn't be the majority, but... Um, yeah, there are more heart attacks happen at that time period than any other time period uh, during the week. And that people are, ha- they, they've done this sort of happiness level and people are happiest. You know, their, their happiness levels start to rise at about 3 p.m. on a Friday. And it peaks on a Saturday afternoon. I'm assuming Saturday after because after Saturday, you know, Saturday evening, people start to think, well, geez, you know, work's got to get to work again. And Sunday, everybody's instead of just enjoying Sunday, everybody's thinking about the job that they hate. Man, I got to go back to work tomorrow. Oh, I don't want to go to work. But people play on Friday night and Saturday night. And you would think that they would recover on Sunday, but uh, they, they're just probably sitting around moping that they got to go back to work on Monday. And Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are dreadful for a lot of people. It's just awful. You know, you know what's really sad about Thursday? Why do people perk up on Thursday? Well, according to sociologists, people perk up on Thursday because of the anticipation of Friday, which is the last day of the work week. Everybody thinks, oh, it's Thursday, man. Just one more day. Awesome. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, they're in the thick of it at work, and they're just miserable. I hate my job. I hate my job. I hate my job. Thursday comes around. It's like, oh, man, just one more day till the weekend. This is awesome. One more day. And then Friday's like, woohoo, TGI Friday, everybody. Notice how happy people are on Friday morning. Even the people who aren't usually normally happy, if you work in an office building, notice how some of the people, um, if you're sitting in in an office QB right now, look around your office. See how happy some of the miserable people are today. Why? Because it's Friday. And pay attention to them on Monday and Tuesday. They're going to be absolutely tremendously miserable. Unless, of course, you're one of those people who's miserable on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Then you might not notice so much. And if you're one of those people who's miserable on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it's probably time for a career or a job change. Just saying. If you can't go through your entire week thinking, I cannot believe this week went by so fast, then you probably need to be doing something different. Well, look, I've been there. I've, I've had jobs I've hated. I've had jobs I've loathed. And the week drags. 
And you get to Friday and you say, I cannot believe how long this week was. Oh my, I am so glad it's over. Five o'clock or six o'clock comes around and it's like, oh, I'm free at last. I cannot believe that was a hell week. And it was probably no different from any other week. But you don't like what you're doing. It bores you to death. Maybe, you know, your coworkers great on you, get on your nerves. Maybe your boss is a total jerk or whatever the reason is, but you don't like your job. But if you love your job, if you love what you're doing, you're not even sure what day of the week it is. Because your weekend and your weekday are the same. You're playing both times. So you look, we live in a country where you have the opportunity more than any place else on this planet to make your weekday seem like your weekend. You have the opportunity to change and be, and be in direct control of your life to do just about anything you damn well please to make your life so you're not sure, is it Sunday or is it Wednesday? I don't know. I'm having too much fun, both on the weekend and during the weekday. Or wait a minute, is my weekday my weekend? Is my weekend my weekday? You have the opportunity to do that. You've got the grand opportunity to do that. You don't have to be smarter than the average bear. There, there's a new Yogi Boo Boo movie, movie coming out, I do believe, right? What is, it, what is the new stupid movie that came out? Uh, Zoolander. Uh, well, they're play, well, I know, I know. I just got through going through an entire segment diatribe of, of Hollywood playing up stupidity and it's not so funny. Well, if you watch the old, the original Zoolander, but I don't know, when was that? Uh, that's what, 12 years ago maybe? It was early 2000s, right? So you're talking 12, 12 to 15 years ago for the original movie to come out. Now the sequel's out. But it was, it's, <laughs> there's a perfect example of stupidity killing you. You want to talk, original Zoolander, his, his, uh, his flatmates, his housemates, his roommates, whatever you want to call them, all four of them were airheaded models. He was the only one that had some sense of common sense. While the other three, you know, uh, portended to have a, instead of a water fight, a gasoline fight. And then one of them decided that they were going to light a cigarette while they were doused in gasoline at a gas station and blew themselves up. Okay, total airheadedness and stupidity killed them. I know it's a movie, but stuff, stuff similar to that happens in real life. If you don't believe me, watch YouTube. But I also bring it up because... He had a dream to do something that he really wanted to do. In the end, he didn't like modeling. He he got tired of it. He hated it. He dreaded it. And he wanted to do something different. He wanted to open a school, you know, for smart people to do, you know, who are really, really good looking or something like that, right? And at the end of the movie, he actually got it. He got his dream and he was happy as a lark. So even somebody as beef-headed, you remember there was a character, uh, uh, that said that, said of Zoolander, where am I going to find somebody that beef-headed? So, so he was that beef-headed, but yet still he was able to understand his dream and fulfill his dream of what he wanted to do for his life's work. So even somebody as airheaded and stupid as Zoolander in a movie like that could find his purpose. Everybody out there in real life can find their purpose. So that you don't have this, uh, this notion of, of, of dread Sunday evening. So you're not put in that category of, of, of threatening, having, being threatened by a heart attack on a Sunday evening or, or early Monday morning. So you're not feeling such relief at the end of the week versus such anxiety at the beginning of the week. You have the opportunity and the ability just to say, you know what? I want to do something that makes me feel like I'm on vacation seven days of the week. Now, yeah, you're going to need a break. Hey, look, I need time off from doing this. 
I enjoy my weekends and doing other things. Just because you like doing one thing doesn't mean you have other interests. Don't, don't have other interests. I do. I fully enjoy doing other things. But I don't dread Sunday evening. Sunday evening, I think, yeah, man, I get to go play again tomorrow. I know some people say, Rod, you're lucky. No, I'm not lucky. I worked my butt off to be able to do it. That's the, that's the other thing that we have a problem with. In this, We think that everything should come so easily. And the worst offenders of this attitude are the millennials. And I know I have said this before, and I've been taking a task. No, millennials, I've, and I've given my reasons. And every time I've given the reason, most people will say, you know what? You're kind of right about millennials. And I have millennials that get mad at me. And I say, really? You're going to get mad at me. You're complaining that you're not making what? $80,000 a year? $100,000 a year? Why do you think you, are, you should have that? When people twice your age with twice your work experience are not making that. Well, I have a college degree. Well, so do they. Why is it that you think? I, I mean, this is the first generation. You, and you can say, no, every generation thought that. No, they didn't. This is the first generation that thinks that they should have everything that their parents worked 20, 30, 40 years to get. It's the only generation that thinks they need to have it now. That they deserve it. They don't, not that they can work for it. They think they deserve it now. Well, I deserve that $100,000 a year job. No, you don't. You deserve to take that entry-level position. I don't care what kind of degree you got. You have no work history or work experience. You have no life experience. You have no experience, period. You're still immature. Uh, face it, you're 22 years old. You're still thinking like a high schooler. You're immature. This is a grown-up world. You don't deserve any of that. The grown anything that the grown-ups have. Sorry. Look, it doesn't just because you think that you deserve something or think you have money or think that you're smart, it doesn't mean that you're intelligent. And and sometimes you get to where you are out of pure luck. Now, I'm sorry. I'm going to say this about Mark Zuckerberg. The kids still sound like he's like he's in high school. I can't listen to him talk because it sounds he's 30 years old or 31 or 32. What He's got a daughter now. He's married with a kid and he still sounds like he's 16. But he's, you know, he's got power now, right? He's one of the you know, most successful business people in the world. Yeah, yeah, I'm, look, yeah, he was smart with computers. He figured out how to code things. And then he figured out what people might like simply because he didn't have it. Now think about that. Facebook was started because Zuckerberg was awkward. Seriously. By the way, speaking of Facebook, they've um I guess they've they've hit expectations or above expectations and their stock is on the rise, the earnings expectations and their stock is on the rise. Good for them. I didn't buy any Facebook stock. I wasn't buying into that hype. And indeed, there are a lot of people that did the first year and they got burned. I mean, they got burned big t- there are people walking away this laugh. <laughs> Listen, the other night uh, I had a I had I had a few friends over. At, it, well, not after the show because show ends. At, it would have been after the show when I used to have it in the evening, uh, but they came over and and they just wanted to have like this movie night. I don't know why, because I I don't have the largest TV of my friends, although the ones that came over I think mine is the biggest. So maybe that's why. Um, but I, by far don't have, I mean, I have a friend who's got an 80 inch TV. It's massive. It's a beautiful picture. It's massive, but he's not the one that came over. Um, I would definitely have questioned. <laughs> we should have went over to his house cause he's got the 80 inch screen TV, but we watched the Will Smith movie. An old Will. Well, it's not exactly old, I guess. I, I don't know when it came out. But it's one that I hadn't seen. 
And at first, I'm, I'm like, you know, I, Will Smith has really kind of pissed me off of late. And I and he goes, but Will Smith is good. And I'm like, yeah, I know. There, I there hasn't been a Will Smith movie that I've seen that I did not like. And and I haven't seen all of his movies, so I can honestly say there isn't a movie that I have that I've seen of Will Smith that I did not like. I didn't. What was it? After Earth? Didn't see that. Uh, Bagger or Vagger, Bans, Vance, Bans, whatever it was, where he was a golf I think he was a golf cat. I didn't see that. I didn't see a few other Will Smith movies. And, you know, the ones that even, the ones that were panned especially, I didn't see them. So I can't say, well, there's, you know, Will, Will Smith. I, I don't like Will Smith's movies. No, I, I can honestly say that I, there is, hasn't been one that I've seen that I have not liked. I don't even like Six Degrees of Separation. That was a very good movie back in his early part of his career. But a couple of nights ago, we watched Focus. And I was skeptical. It's kind of funny because I had to stop and ask myself, what the hell are you thinking, Rod? I was afraid to watch the movie Focus because I hadn't heard a lot about it before. So I was afraid if I watched it, I wasn't going to like it and I was going to break my perfect record with Will Smith because I've I'm Will Smith is already on the outs with me now. He's going to have to do a lot of work to get back into my good graces. Not that he really cares what I think, but you know, still, I'm not going to the theater anymore to to, to see any any more of his movies. I'm not. You know, when it comes to pers- uh, to the person, the persona off the screen, the the person that he really is, Will Smith is an idiot. But doesn't mean that he doesn't have business acumen. Doesn't mean that he doesn't have talent to produce films and, and that entertain people. Because obviously he does. But I didn't want to watch it at first, the movie Focus, because I was really afraid I wasn't going to like it. Now that's just stupid. A, a stupid reason not to watch a movie. I don't want to watch it because I might not like it and it'll break my record. I uh, that. Really, when you think about it, that's really... See, even us smart people, so-called smart people... See, I tell you, smart people do say and do stupid stuff. That was just absolutely idiotic to, to even think that. It was just stupid. But I watched it. I liked it. It was entertaining. It was a little different. The ending was definitely a shocker. I didn't quite see that one coming. Now, I'm not going to sp- uh, spoil it for you if you haven't seen it. I'm going to recommend that, pe- well, I I liked it, so I guess I if I like something, I tend to recommend stuff that I like. I recommend that, you know, you take a, you, you watch it. I, I think it's on, it may be on HBO, probably on DVD. You can rent it at, you know, d- 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 net from Netflix. I don't think it's streaming on Netflix. You can get probably get the DVD on Netflix. You could probably get it at Red Box or Green Box or one of the other boxes. Uh, if you've got a video store that's still alive and thriving, uh, they might have it there too. They'll probably have it there too. Honestly, are there any video stores remaining? I'm just... I. I don't think we have one. I don't think they're around anymore. I don't think... Well, I'm sure there's got to be. There's got to be a a throwback holdout video store somewhere. I don't... I'm having a dickens of a time trying to figure out where one is in, in, in my state. I mean, Blockbuster closed, and even the strong mom and pop shops that, that were around after Blockbuster... Even they've begun to close down. There was there was a uh, there was a very popular one in Keene, New Hampshire called Video Headquarters. Had some of the you know dumbest commercials. I mean, I, the the dialogue in the commercials was just they were awful. Uh, he tried to rhyme sometimes and stuff. It was just awful. But he was the hold. I think he was the oldest video store in Keene. He was and 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 last year he finally closed his doors. I mean, he tried to compete with Netflix and, and uh, uh, well, then Blockbuster started their streaming and, and, and DVDs to, in your mail service and Redbox. He tried to, he tried doing the, the, the red, the, the store Redbox model. 
you know, you could, it, it's red box, but you got an entire store, not just a limited selection from a, from a, a vending machine. That probably extended his life a couple of years, his business life a couple of years. But eventually, he, he couldn't make a go. Things had changed that much. The writing was on the wall. He was done. So he, you know, I think it was last year, 2015, uh, that he closed. Early 2015 that he closed. So now I'm trying to think of any place that is a, uh, that rents. I mean, you could go to the library, obviously, and get some videos. And you can go to, yeah, check out your library, by the way. Uh, for a selection of DVDs and video, VHS. If you have a VHS player, you can probably still rent VHS tapes from your library. I'm saying. And if you want, uh, you can probably still buy them. Yeah, you can still buy VHS tapes on Amazon and in probably in your uh, your thrift store like Goodwill and and uh, you know Saint Vincent de Pauls and 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 Salvation Army and things like that. Um, you might be able to. Those are those are becoming those are more like collectible commodities now. People still buy VHS tapes. What's interesting is if you can find something that's on beta. What's even more interesting is finding a beta machine still operational where you can play that beta tape. I was an early adopter of beta. Yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> I got it wrong. Well, it, it did. You know, back then, beta did have a better picture than VHS. But in the end, one, Sony screwed up the entire marketing program of the, of the beta machine, and then they dropped it. And two, the tapes for beta just weren't long enough to do what people wanted them to do versus VHS. VHS but, but I think beta, in the, in the worst video mode, you could get three hours out of a tape. Where a VHS, you could get twice that. It was like six hours, five or six hours. Well... You can get two movies on a VHS tape. And if you wanted the good quality of, of the beta, you were barely able to get one movie. Sometimes a movie was too long for the tape. Do you realize that I think my first... Um, you would not be, have been able to get Lord of the Rings, any of the movies individually, on one beta tape. You wouldn't have been able to do it. So that was a demise of beta. Uh, that was that was a drawback. The, the you know and and that and because it was tape and it was just it was the time came and went for tape. It really did. You just can't get as much information on the tape as you can when you digitize it. Um, and that was a problem with the laser disc too. Laser was just those things. You remember the lasers? Laser disc things were huge, right? They were they were like they were bigger than an LP, and I know there are some people uh, who are young young and listening to this who are young enough to say, to probably look at, at mom and dad and say, "What's an LP?" It's called a long player. It's a vinyl record, and uh, usually, you, well, you had two sides. You know, you had the you had the the, the front side and the B side, A side and B side. Uh, but usually, I think the, the most you could get on an LP back then was what twelve songs. Depend, you would get what is it like forty-five to fifty minutes maximum of music on a single LP. Yeah, if you wanted more than that, you had to go to a double LP. And there are plenty of times that you know um, artists went to a double LP because they wanted more than you know they wanted the hour, hour and a half of music. Or they had more than twelve songs that they wanted to put on, or or the songs were too long. <clears throat> uh, so they had to, you had to do that type of thing by going by going um, uh, a double album, which was fine. But today, you know, you got you got CDs, and you can fit a heck of a lot more music. What is it? Janet Jackson's? Uh, um, I had Janet Jackson's CD, one of her CDs. It's eighteen songs on there. One CD. 
So you can you can do that kind of stuff. You can do that kind of stuff. We'll be back. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Sign him up for the Box of Bait Club and he'll never be hungry again. The Box of Bait Club is a brand new dream come true for every fisherman. Something new and different in your tackle box every month. Every month, another excuse to get outside and do what you love. Don't let this one get away. The Box of Bait Club is currently accepting a limited number of free orders with subscriptions starting at $39.95 per month. Find out more now. Log on to boxofbaitclub.com. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. And then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on water. Washer and dryer coverage. Just call 1 800 616 8010. That's 1 800 616 8010. Again, 1 800 616 8010. Call now. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich, working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare, having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to freedom133.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to freedom133.com right now and change your life today. That's freedom, the number 133.com. Go to freedom133.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to (laughs) freedom133.com. Attention business owners, we know that owning a business means getting things done right now. So if your right now list includes a new building, call the right now company. General Steel. We can design a building for your business quickly and save you thousands of dollars. That's right, thousands. You may think General Steel only builds large projects or that you can't afford General Steel quality. Well, check these prices. How about a 40 by 60 foot building for under $22,000 or even a 50 by 100 for under $35,000? That's right, a 5,000 square foot building for under $35,000. And these buildings all have General Steel quality. Best of all, you can still order a building and have it delivered in time to build this year. How's that for right now so if your right now list includes a new building call the right now company general steel 800-393-5756 800-393-5756 800-393-5756 that's 800-393-5756 Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. Oh, boy. Man, I had a rough night's sleep. Oh, boy. Whew. I got a letter from the IRS yesterday, and I, I just couldn't sleep. Man, my, I'm dying here. Somebody help me. IRS problems affect more than just your finances. If you're ready to take back control of your life and you owe more than $10,000, you need to call the tax doctor. Their expert staff can immediately protect you from the IRS and state collectors and get you the best possible tax settlement guaranteed. The IRS has recently released new programs geared in helping struggling taxpayers where you may qualify to settle your tax debt and wipe out up to 85% or more of what you currently owe. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, call the tax doctor right now. See if you qualify to pay less. 800-989-1694. 800-989-1694. 800-989-1694. Again, 800-989-1694. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Good morning. You are back for hour number two here on the Rod Eccles Show. I am still your lovable host, El Rod, and I am still coming to you live from my Bunker Eyes home studio somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire on this Freedom Friday morning. As we continue on with the program, fastest three hours in on Internet Talk Radio, Freedom Friday. You can participate on Freedom Friday uh, morning right here by dialing 603-835-3224 on that device known as a telephone or cellular phone or smartphone or other telephony style type device. Dial in the digits of 603-835-3224 because we can't, you know, maybe one day we won't need radio. Man will get so smart we'll we'll just have uh, uh, telepathy. You know, we'll be able to, can you, yeah, do you need radio? Do you need radio signals? If it, What happens if, um, you know, everybody can read everybody else's minds? Or will there be any secrets? Will there be the need for, like, homeland security? How are they going to bug your brain? Are they going to have, <laughs> they're going to have something called, what, PSYOPs? What, there was a, t- a TV show that had psy- PSYOPs, you know, psychic operations or something. I, I, don't, I don't remember what that was, but this... This is where we have a lot of fun. I know we're talking, some people might be thinking, some of you highbrow, high and mighty, highly intellectual people think we're talking about total inane nonsense today. That's what we do on Fridays. We try to lighten it up a little bit. Um, Speaking of lightening it up, because it is Freedom Friday, after all, where we celebrate our freedom over our weekends. Not yeah, 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 I know, I know a lot of you probably work through the weekends. You don't have we- your weekend may be a Thursday and Friday or maybe a Wednesday, Thursday or something. You don't have a traditional Monday through Friday schedule with Saturday, Sunday off. Uh, but most of us do have Saturday, Sunday off. And we like to go to the ball game. We like to eat hot dogs. Kosher only, please. Uh, we like to do all kinds of crazy things like go snowboarding or skiing. Yeah, people still ski. 
uh, water skiing in the summer, you know, snowmobiling, motor BMXing, motocrossing, that type of thing. We like to do all kinds of things on our weekend or our time off from our jobs. Probably because so many of us don't like our jobs. That's why we try to get a thrill out of doing our stuff that we like to do on the weekends. There are, there are even people that actually, actually, I don't mean like, they love mowing their lawn. Go figure. It takes all kinds. But we live in a nation where we still have the ability to enjoy still almost any type of activity that we want. Although our government is trying to limit the number of activities that we enjoy. Because, you know, some of them might not be good for us, so they say. Uh, I'm not going to give you any examples. You, if you're probably, you know, hell, the government could probably find a problem or an issue with bowling. If they wanted to. I used to love bowling. I haven't been bowling in years. Love it. Used to be about, uh, they call it what, the American Junior Bowling Association? Or, or no, Congress. AJBC. Uh, I don't, does that still exist? I don't know. Do kids still do that kind of stuff? I don't know. Um, used to, I used to do it. Used to do it a long time ago. As a kid. But if you want to change your job, if you want to, uh, you know, if you don't want to be miserable during the week all the time, then, and you need a suggestion for a job, then cnsnews.com may have a suggestion for you. Uh, Become a union member. And I know that I, that, you're sitting in an office somewhere, and that probably just floored you. Did Rod just say become a union member? Rod, you don't like unions. I remember you, you said you don't like unions. I remember you said that you've been a part of two different unions and didn't like either one. You, you would be correct. I was a, once a, a, a not-so-proud member who was overly abused and used by the Teamster Union. When I worked at UPS... And if I'm not mistaken, UPS still has a stranglehold, or uh, Teamster still has a stranglehold on UPS. I was a mo- uh, once a member of the uh, Iron Workers Union, and the Iron Workers Union that that had a stranglehold over the company called the O. M. Edwards Company that I worked for. Helped drive the company into bankruptcy and dissolvement where over 300 people lost their jobs. Well, they thought they were, you know, doing the right thing and protecting uh, the union workers' wages. But what they didn't realize is that if they didn't do certain things and capitulate to certain certain things, that, you know, you weren't going to have a job at all. And eventually that's exactly what happened. The company went under. And those wonderful iron workers, union members like myself, didn't have a job. And the people at the union hall, the union brass, they, all they could do is shrug their shoulders. Hey, we tried. You know, this happens sometimes. What? Over 200 union workers are out of a job, plus over 100 office and management workers are out of a job. And all you can say is, you tried and did your best. No, you didn't try. That's why they went bankrupt. So, no, I am not a fan of you. Now, do unions still work today in a, in a minority of industries? Yes, they do. There was a time for unions absolutely in this country and indeed all over the world. In this country today, it is not the time of the union. But if you want a good job, and if you want to, I don't know, you, you, well, you probably won't enjoy it, but maybe you'll get paid enough to, to, to enjoy it, is become a union member. Go work at a union shop. And let me tell you something. There is no better place to go to work and be a union member than the United States government. Why? Because 49% of union members in this country worked for the government back in 2015. That's right. Half... Of this country's union workers are government employees. 
So why not be a union member? That means you, you know you got a one in you know one in two chance, fifty fifty chance of uh, of being working for the government, the federal government, any government. The percentage of American wage and salary workers who belong to a union was only 11% in 2015. 11%. That's down, by the way. If you actually look at the private sector numbers on union membership, it is down even further than that. If you take government jobs out of the the employment sector and just count private jobs... Private union jobs do not account for 11% of the whole workforce. It's less than that. And there, you know, uh, there was at one point where over one third of American workers belong to a union. So you're talking at least 35% of the American workforce at one point belonged to a union. Unions are passe. They're down to 11%. And that's only because government is propping them up. The percentage of union uh, union members who work for the government was at 49%, according to data released today by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So the government is, I know some people are out there going to say, oh, where'd, where'd you get that, Rod? You can't believe that number. Really? The government gave us the number. I love people who try to dissuade me from believing certain statistics, and they, and they try to blame it on on, on the Republicans or, or some overreaching conservative. And I, sit and I, I look at them and I say, look. I got this stat from the Obama administration themselves. And then they go into this whole diatribe. Well, you give me the exact link. And I always say, what are you out of your mind? Go look it up for yourself. I'm not going to do your work for you. I'm tired of doing lazy people's work. 419. Let's take a call here. You're live on the Rod Eccles show. Go. 419. Hello. Hello. You are live. Go ahead. I just want to talk about last night's uh, rally that they had in uh, Iowa for the veterans. Okay. Uh, simply amazing. Uh, I'm a vet myself, and uh, I, I've basically never seen nothing like that in my entire life um, as far as uh, a campaign trail went for uh anybody running for our office and uh it, it literally brought tears to my eyes and uh i'm glad that the man did it uh i'm still not uh, uh not knowing who i'm voting for yet but uh i'm glad that i watched that particular event okay now you watched it on tv you're not in iowa no 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 i'm not in iowa okay and and you're an undecided yeah, as of right now, I'm I'm still undecided. Okay, well, look, you're you're among actually millions of people. If you're if you're talking my state here in New Hampshire, uh, some polls say that as many as half the the voters are still undecided. And we're a week away from the from the primary, nine days, ten. And what what do you think it's going to take for you to decide? What do you want to hear from these candidates? Well, I just I just want to hear honesty. I've heard I've heard no honesty, and uh, it's it's unfortunate that it's it's, it's come down to uh, as far as their policies go, it's just attacking each other's policy, and um, to me, it's just it's it's been a fiasco. It's it's sad for it's sad for the Republicans right now, and. Uh, I am a registered Republican voter, and uh, it's just it's, it's sad. It's sad times right now. Um, the media is not helping out much. I, I don't I don't go to the media too too often. Um, I listen to the radio and I go to the internet for uh, most of my news. Um, but for 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 what it's worth, it's it, it's just it's a, a lot of dishonesty. That I'm seeing and bashing. I, um, it, it just used to be that you know, candidate would talk about themselves, their policies, and uh, continue on. And it hasn't came to that, unfortunately, because they bought into the uh, media on TV and they feel that they have to do so. And it's it, it's sad. 
Yeah, that's probably the way a lot of people who are in your position right now feel as well, which is why they haven't made a, a decision. Uh, what did you like? Because uh, I did not watch either the debate or the Trump veterans rally. And my father is a vet. Well, before he passed away, he was a vet. Uh, so I'm very familiar familiar with the uh, the problems that vets are facing today especially from our own government that has made so many promises to them and not kept them. What did you like about the Trump rally? Uh, it, it, just just the vets speaking and uh, uh, the way it was it was put together. Um, it, 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 literally, I, I, it literally brought tears to my eyes uh, when, when I see our, our veterans up there speaking. Um, uh, I... You know, did it have anything to do with the candidate? I suppose. Um, but but you know what you know what what America has fought for, and uh, uh, it, 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 like I said, it literally it brought tears to my eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, I can tell you the the last time I cried was uh, I lost a dog of fourteen years, and that was some years ago. Um, and uh, that literally did. It, it, it touched a nerve with me. Um, and it, it lets us know where, where we're at in America today. We're in, we're in a sad place when it comes to our vets. And, uh, um, you know, and then, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll hear things on different radio shows about, you know, people using the vets as tools. You'll hear this. You'll hear that. And uh, I don't believe that. I think any any... Anything to do with vets, I don't care who's delivering the message. As long as the vets get to speak, I think is an opportunity for uh, for us. And I I I just uh, I just appreciate it. And, uh, uh, and people see through whatever the message might be from whoever's delivering it. Uh, whatever candidate, I think you kind of just lose anything to do with the candidate, and it, and it brings you down to. Uh, the real issue on that. And, uh, so you I thought think it, I thought Trump was... won this fracas between Megyn Kelly, Fox, and Trump? Do I think who? You think Trump won this fracas, this battle? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Well, you know, I think, it's, I think it's been said. standing up to the establishment, uh, I think, I think, uh, <laughs> Uh, realistically, Fox, you know, they got their own candidate. CNN, they have their own candidate. ABC, NBC, I, it's it's almost to a joke anymore. I mean, there, there's no good there's no good coverage of anybody or anything. It's pretty much twisted. If I want to know, I can see and listen to anybody I want at any time on my computer. Uh, what they have to say, and I can uh, I. You know, get my news off the radio, and I get it off of that way. I don't, I don't listen to to, to setups of any candidates. I just, I just don't. No, oh, well, you how, know, they they say that Trump was demanding five million dollars from Fox for him to actually appear at the debate, uh, and that he was going to give that money to uh, charity like vets uh, groups. Well, it looks like. Trump beat his $5 million number because they're reporting that he actually raised with the event last night $6 million. Yeah. Yeah, he, and probably more to come. Um, and I hope continue to come, actually, for the vets. Uh, that would be nice. I'd like to see that. I mean, Jerry Lewis had telethons and uh, did a lot of work for, uh, you know, that. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I, and I heard it on the radio this morning that, you know, you know, there's a caller in, I won't say what station mentioned about, uh, you know, Trump's pr- prancing around, uh, you know, the veterans, you know, you know, and it's pretty sad and, you know, to gain votes. Well, you know, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that one. Uh, I, I don't think that's the case, uh, because I, I personally know that he did, he did build the, uh, Vietnam, uh, uh, memorial there in 1988 in New York, you know, um, with his own money. And, uh, 
that, that tells me a little a little different than what the report is, is going on. So brilliant! You're absolutely. I had forgotten about that, and I'm sure, obviously, a lot of other people have forgotten that Donald Trump actually did that. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. He did build that that memorial. He did pay for it out of his own pocket, and he's done more than that out of his own pocket, as far as vets are concerned. But um, yeah, but that is that is a good reminder, for, especially for people who don't like Trump and think that you know he's probably using vets to his own own gain because he doesn't really care about. Well, obviously that can't be true if he's done stuff like that for vets in the past without expecting anything in return, especially votes because he was never running. Um, you know, this is why I always say you always have to look at the whole person. You get you got to learn about people because uh, sometimes when you learn something, it's not something new that you learned. You're being reminded of something that they've said or done in the past. That's very important to yeah. where they are today. And that memorial definitely shows that Trump was being genuine. Yes, that that blue that blue hole is kind of in what what you know the media say about the, he kicks bums out of the front of his and uh, you know, out of the front of his uh, you know hotels and stuff like that. And, uh, I don't know about that uh, as well. I know um, basically uh, a lot a lot of establishments uh, do not allow uh, homeless any of any any nature to lay on their properties in front of a building. So right, that's um, true. It's a, it's now, a what state are you thing. from? What state are you calling from? I'm from, I'm from Ohio. Ohio. When is your primary? Pardon? When is your primary? When is our primary? Uh-huh. It's next month here. Okay. So you've got Six a little... The 16th. The 16th. So you've got a, about... Yeah. So that's roughly a week week or so uh, yeah. after New Hampshire. So you've got you've got another two or three weeks to make your decision. Yeah. Now in this field, do you, are you leaning? Are there two or three candidates that you're leaning towards that you, that you're choosing from, or is the whole field still open to you? Uh, at this point, I would say that it's, it's pretty much open <laughs> at this point. So everybody's still got a shot at your vote. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, here, here in Ohio, uh, as you know, uh, <laughs> we we have John Kasich here in Ohio. Uh, I'm personally not a fan, um, but he is what he is. The man tries. Uh, to me, he's always been establishment. Um, when I see it's my my my. Uh, you know, my thing on establishment is, uh, you know, somebody that's been in office for a long time. Uh, and and that's not what our government's meant for. It's for people to come in, serve, do good, and, uh, you know, give other, others opportunity to do. And I'll, I'll never change my view on that. Uh, I, I think there should be term limits. Um, so when uh, Kasich uh, was voted in here, uh, we pretty much got what we got out of that. Um, uh, Ohio is is typically, uh, you know, we're in we're in the auto union state. Uh, it's typically a, <laughs> a democratic a democratic town. Yeah, and he's had uh, a blue state. Pretty um, much like Christie in New Jersey, you know, democratic. Yeah, pretty much. Um, you know that. It, uh, you know, I, I I I did personally work with the uh, uh, a lot of different organizations through uh, bingo charities and stuff like that, and uh, for the most part, a lot of old ladies and stuff like that and men are uh, Democrats. Um, however, um, three nights a week I do attend. I attend bingo myself, and uh, I have noticed that. Uh, uh, Everything's changed, uh, and I don't believe Democrats will be in the White House this year. <laughs> well, uh, let's, let's hope not. But all those no, other no. candidates, they still have got a shot at your vote. So, 
I'm, it I'm up against. Me. Yeah, I'm it up against a, me for Ohio. Oh, okay. <laughs> it That's really, good. it that really does. does. Well, I'm up against it a hard break me. here, so I thank you for your call. And your 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 feelings are like a lot of other people right now that are still undecided. Thanks a lot for the call. Good luck to your on your choice. You're you're welcome, and uh, have a great day. <laughs> bye bye. Well, look. I, hey, I've said it before. All you supporters of other people, you better convince them. On January 21st, 9 p.m., controversial and international rapper-songwriter Corey Preem will be performing his latest single, Blame It On My Mama, from his latest mixtape, There's Heaven and Then There's Hell. Hip-hop royalty will be in attendance, and a special guest is expected to stop in for a performance. It all happens at the Jerome at 85 Avenue A, New York, New York. Tickets just $15. Say Blame It On My Mama at the door to possibly win a free pair of Samsung Oculus Rift virtual reality glasses. Visit CoreyPreem.com for more information. That's C-O-R-E-P-R-E-M-E.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on washing and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. Start training for a new career in as little as 18 days. National EMS Institute's Innovative Boot Camp Program will train you for a new career. Learn to respond to emergency situations and become a certified EMT in just 18 days. National EMS Institute guarantees 100% job placement. Visit www.nationalemsinstitute.com today to learn more about our 18-day boot camp. Or call us at 1-800-497-6732. National EMS Institute. When you're ready to take the edge off a hectic day, I suggest you start with a little music from Franz Black. I guess there's lots of ways to look at things that don't seem right. No Worries has just been released on iTunes and Amazon. 
It's gonna be alright. You can find Friends Black and his music on his website, friendsblack.com. F R A N Z Black.com. It's gonna be alright. And we are back. Welcome back. It is I, your lovable host, El Rod, coming to you live still from my Bunker Eyes home studio. Bottom of the hour, 603-835-3224 is still the number to call, should you wish to join me here live and talk about just about anything that you want. Last caller, thank you very much for your call. Uh, giving us some input on what you saw in um, uh, the Donald Trump event versus the uh, the GOP debate on Fox. Um, I, I did an interview earlier this morning on um, Ocala, an Ocala radio station. Uh, yeah, no, well, no, obviously I was not down there. I was via phone. I was with them in, in spirit and voice, but I was not with them physically in their studios. Uh, but, um, you know, um, uh, Larry and Robin down there, they're wonderful people. The two of them are absolutely fantastic. And, you know, but they're like regular, they're like any other morning show people. They're very cheery. They seem very, well, they're happy because they enjoy what they do. And I, and, and this is part of the theme of today's program is about enjoying what you do and enjoying your freedom. But I don't know what people should be that happy and alert at seven o'clock in the morning uh, because uh, every time I've talked to them uh, they've been very happy and cheery uh, again they're, but they're wonderful people they really are and, and that's you know most radio uh, most morning show hosts are but the, the thing is is that these the, those morning shows they're they've been up for hours by the time they go on the air um, they're not, they just don't wake up at, you know, six o'clock and race to the studio to be on the air at seven. Uh, no, they're up long before then they're up for a few hours before then. Uh, and, but they, they're still, st- well, that's just, you know, they had, they've had a chance to really thoroughly wake up, which is why they sound so awake. Uh, cause they've been up for hours, but they do it because they enjoy what they're doing. And you hear that over the air. You can hear somebody who's not having a good time on the air when, when they're on the air. You can, you, you don't even have to see their body language. You can just hear it in their voice. You know, a lot of times when you hear interviews, uh, especially on the radio, you can hear in the in a person's voice when they're not enjoying the interview. You can hear it. So if you can hear the displeasure or discomfort, uh, you can also hear the pleasure. And comfort, and I, you know, most radio hosts, they, they, you hear a lot of, of happiness, and you hear a lot of joy and comfort because they love what they're doing. Whether or not you like them is irrelevant at that particular point because they just enjoy what they're doing. Uh, you can say that you don't like this person, you don't like that person, you don't like that morning show, you don't like that show. That's not the point. The point is, is that they're enjoying what they're doing. Now, nobody said just because you enjoy what you're doing that you're any good at it. Um. But if you do enjoy what you're doing, chances are you're going to be good, decent, acceptable at what you do. Now, now that's, I mean, you know, you could, you could really thoroughly enjoy playing basketball, but it doesn't mean you're going to be a, a star in the NBA. And you, could be, you could be awful. You, you probably don't even know the difference between a double dribble and a walk and a, and a triple dribble. But yeah, there is such a thing, but they don't call it a trip. The referees don't call it a triple dribble, but I have seen triple dribble. It, and it's from people who are having fun, but they just cannot play the game. They're terrible. 
but they are having a ball every t- pun intended every time they play. But I have seen that, especially in kids. You, that's when triple dribbling really happens. It happens in, with little kids. Now they're just happy and, and uh, to have fun and play the game, and then you know they bounce and catch, bounce and catch, and bounce and catch before you get a chance to blow your wibble and say double dribble. They've already triple dribbled. <laughs> but and you tell them that, and they still have. They're still having a ball. Nothing deters them. So. Uh, be like a kid when it comes to your job. Enjoy what you're doing. Why, you know the the uh, I think Bill Murray said life is too damn short not to like what you're doing. Uh, he's not the only one who said that, but I think he's probably one of the more noted people of late to have said that. And again, join the the ranks of the federal government if you if you absolutely think that you cannot get a job that you like, then you want to go for the money. Uh, you might as well go join a union, and when you join a union, you might as well join the union that uh, uh, that has the most members, which would be government. So, did you know that there are seven million two hundred thousand government workers? There are over seven million two hundred thousand people who work for government in this country. Government workers. No, that's just the union government workers. Not every single person in the government, not all jobs in the government, not all departments are unionized. Now, that means that that with uh, 7,200,000 unionized government workers, it means that the, the total union workforce in this country is around 14,800,000. Um, but in that, that, that 7.2 million workers, government workers, that, that, that's only the union workers there. I mean, can you, what our governments employ nearly 10 million people across this country. Can you believe that? That is insane. I mean, and look, and look I, you know, I'm, I'm talking about the guy who, that includes everybody. The guy who works on, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the street maintenance person who fills in the potholes all the way up to the president of the United States. Nearly 10 million across this country. Now, granted, we're a nation of, of 320 or so million people. But you got to, do, do we really need that many people in government? And what are they all doing? Are they really doing something to make our lives as regular everyday citizens? Are they doing something to make our lives better? Half the time, people would argue that they're making our lives more miserable. And, you know, you wouldn't be that far off the mark. You really wouldn't. And so you've got to have people who are, who enjoy. Now, if you ever go into a government office, if you have to go into a government office to deal with the government for for anything, I, I well, especially the DMV. Uh, but do those people? Do most of them look like they're enjoying themselves? Do most of them sound like they're enjoying their job? I don't think. I'm going to do a Kevin McAllister here. I don't think so. Let's go to the phones again. Six seven eight. You're live on the Rod Eccles Show. Go. Hey, Rod. Love your show, man. Thank you. This is my uh, second time calling you. You're talking about 7.2 million government workers. Yeah, unionized uh, government workers. Unionized, yeah. Well, I can tell you that's probably 7.2 million miserable people. <laughs> <laughs> that might my be mother, true, but but you know what? Many of them yeah. get paid far above their uh, their civilian counterparts. So if you're going to be miserable, you might as well make the money. Yeah, well, my mother retired from the IRS. She was a member of the Treasury Union. And I have no idea to this day what that union did for her at all. We got uh, the monthly mailers from the union. And uh, my mother was miserable working for the IRS. and She didn't get paid a whole lot, but, you know, it is what it is. But uh, you talk about people that are happy. 
doing what they do. And there's one thing that I have noticed in this campaign is that Trump is very happy doing this arduous campaign thing that he's doing. And it's a lot of work and it's a lot of crap he's having to go through. But, you know, every rally I see, everybody is happy. He's happy. He makes people smile. He makes people laugh. And no other candidate as, that I have seen has been able to do that. That's a good observation. Yeah, I think Trump enjoys whatever he's doing. If Trump is doing it, it's doing it. He's doing it because he enjoys doing it, and that is true. Um, yeah. And uh, the, the the event last night, and I sorry to take away from your previous subject, but I just had to get this off my chest. The uh, the event last night, and I and I kind of switched back and forth from the rally for the veterans he held last night where he raised over $6 million and uh, a few clips from the Fox debate. But I tell you what, them guys on stage last night were awesome. They were, you have got to go on YouTube, find the clip from the rally last night for the veterans. And those dudes were having a lot of fun. And that's the thing. I mean, I'm like addicted to these rallies. They're just amazing to watch. It makes me smile. It makes me happy. It gives me a positive outlook. And, you know, hell yeah, I'm voting for Trump. There's no reason not to because every other candidate up there on the stage is very depressing. <laughs> they're, you know, they, they get up there and they do their policy speaks. And they're, you know, these, these guys last night at, on the debate, if you go back, it's, it's all over YouTube. The debate's on YouTube. And you watch these guys, it's like every little comment that they were making or every question they were asked, their responses sounded like canned speeches. They, it was just awful. And I have often pointed Trump, out that canned stuff, the, the overly rehearsed stuff that people don't want that anymore. Yeah. And it, it was... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Trump, Trump, is, don't Trump doesn't deliver <laughs> canned speeches. He doesn't deliver no. canned answers, answers anymore. Um, no. Oh. And, uh, so, you know, in my opinion, supposedly Fox had like 12 million people uh, viewing the debate, so it wasn't a total rating disaster for him. But 12 million people watched a bunch of garbage. <laughs> well, if it was only if it was only 12... 12 million then it was less than half that was expected to watch and and about half which watched the previous fox debate yeah exactly well one thing i do know is that uh as far as i can tell most of the vets especially the ones i know they love trump i have lots of cop friends all the cops they just they're they're nuts for trump but they can't say anything of course um and in this People, in my opinion, love winners, and Trump is a winner. There's nobody else in this field that can declare themselves a winner of anything except maybe a prior political race. And people are tired of politicians as usual. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, I was, in the, I was in the military. I was in the Navy back in the 80s during the Cold War, and I spent 12 years in the Navy. And... Uh, I would go to the local hospital, veterans hospital, for normal routine checkups or whatever. And every time I went there, you would see our older veterans sitting in line waiting for hours and hours and hours. I would go in and be in there for, say, an hour or two, come out, and the same people that were waiting in line, and we're talking elderly World War II veterans, are still waiting in line in the same spot sitting in the chairs, waiting to get seen. And I had guys that would tell me, dude, you got this many years in, why don't you just stay in and retire? And I said, I want to stay and retire for what? So I can sit in line for 100 hours? No way. Because the VA is really screwed up. People really have no idea how bad it is because, hell, I saw it 30 years ago. The service was awful. It and, still is. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just like, just to this day, I still cannot believe it is still as bad as it was back in the 80s. 
it just blows me away. And I am. Rotula's you know, getting and better. Last, but it's such a huge bureaucracy. This thing is like the Titanic with square wheels. I mean, how do you move something like that to make it better? I just don't get it. Trump gets it. And I think uh, possibly a good way to go is the way, what he's talking about is, is, is do, uh, steering towards some privatization of their care, which they've got uh, really strict rules on it. You have to be outside of X miles of uh, VA center. And I like, I like what he's talking about. That's my thing. And I, I really think with uh, Trump coming in, he's going to turn the tables on these people. He's going to make things better, and he's going to do it right for the veterans. That's a huge issue with me. I think that he will make some huge strides. Now, it, it's it's a monumental task for anyone any one person to take on this bureaucratic juggernaut that we call our federal government and its various departments, and that includes the VA. I mean, it's yeah. it's humongous. So, first of all, I want people to understand something. I don't care who it is that ends up being the nominee and hopefully the president, whether it's Trump, Cruz, Rubio, whoever. You have to understand that the, no matter who it is, not even Trump can, can turn all of that around in four years. This is not a one-man, one-term thing. And I think this is a lot of times we Americans get this wrong because we think, oh, we give this we gave this guy a shot and he didn't do everything we wanted him to do. Well, it's a process. You got to If you're going to elect Trump, elect Trump, put him in office, let him do his thing and understand that he's not going to give you 100 percent of what you want. He's probably no, Trump I'm, will probably try like you would not believe to do that. Uh, I, I believe Cruz probably would, too. But they're not going to get it all done in four or eight years. It's going to take more than one person. But once you get him there, you got to make sure that you keep going in that direction and then elect his replacement with somebody who's like-minded or farther to the right. Because we did an about-face on George Bush. Everybody didn't like George Bush. I don't like George. I don't like And what did they do? They took 15,000 steps backwards by electing Obama. And now we've we got to dig ourselves out of an even bigger hole. This is the kind of nuts that's got to stop. And I, I would hope that with this campaign, maybe this Trump is if Trump has done one thing, he's changed the face of politics, hopefully for a very long time. I hope this is not forgotten in four years. Uh, I, I, I don't hope think it comes it back. Be. I don't and, think it will be. I think it, I think he's introducing a sea of a sea of change, like you've said, that, you know, and hopefully the people that should vote actually show up and vote like they didn't do in uh, 2012. I mean, that really torqued me off. That was our election to, to lose and we lost it. And uh, man, what a disaster. Well, but, I, I just yeah, like it to there's childish one other, behavior. There's, one other, there's only one, and I will tell you, and I'm a 100%, 110% Trump supporter, but I will tell you, there's one thing I wished he would have addressed in his stump speeches, and that is balancing the budget, which we haven't done since Kasich was in office. Um, I remember back in when I think it was, what, 96, or maybe it was 97, when John Kasich actually got Clinton to sign a balanced budget for the first time in God years. And I have no idea why we haven't been able to get back to a balanced budget since then, except for just special interests, the lobbyists or whatever, forcing their forcing Congress to spend money where probably it shouldn't. And even Sean Hannity has repeatedly come out with this idea of the penny plan where we can take a penny out of the every dollar spent to balance the budget so we can start reducing our deficit because the deficit is what's going to kill us in the end. Yeah, it, it happens anytime somebody gets o overextends himself. They can't make the payments. I mean, now, now I'm seeing ads here in New Hampshire and Massachusetts that tout the debt and the, uh, the service in that debt at some point in the near future 
by the time, uh, if we don't address this issue by the time the next president's first term is over by 2020, the 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 service on the debt, and for those of you in Rush Limbaugh's real end, the service on the debt means paying the interest only, without paying it down. Just paying the interest alone will become our third biggest government program. That's a lot yeah, of money being wasted. Have, I mean, yeah, and they still haven't even addressed Social Security. You know, Social Security is supposed to be broke now. <laughs> it, it, well, you know, I hate to tell people, but Social Security was always meant to go broke. I, look, even the best <laughs> scenario, even everybody that, that you talk to that, that is that is pro-Social Security, look, if they never stole the money out of, out of Social Security, if, they, if it was truly a lockbox and it was still in there, we would have enough money to, to run Social Security to about 2050, 2060. Uh, hello, what you're really saying is, is that it was eventually going to run out of money anyway. It was going to go broke. The point is, is that it's a government program that is a tax that do- wasn't intended to really improve the lives of all Americans, just a few of them for a short period of time. That's always going to fail. That's true. That's true. I if think Donald Trump, the- because he's a businessman, I think he fully understands that kind of stuff. Now, whether or not he's able, if he's elected to be president, whether or not he's able to, his biggest problem is not going to be dealing with the Democrats. His biggest problem is going to be McConnell and and uh, Paul Ryan. If they're still in the leadership roles in the Congress, that is Trump's biggest problem. I agree. I, I, I hate to say I hate to say it, but they don't like Trump. And they're going to act like a bunch of spoiled brats. When Trump starts to propose or try to push legislation or have legislation written that is favorable to the American people, that fulfills his promises, they are going to block him every chance they get. I don't know. I think uh, it all depends. I, I, I still think that may be an open question at this point. Uh, the outrage of the American people is really kind of big. <laughs> And I think I'm saying that lightly. That uh, the outrage right now can be seen at the Trump rallies, and you can see it in the Fox News debate. You can see it in their ratings. You can see it everywhere. It very well could be that Paul. You know, Paul Ryan. I think he's. I think somebody's coming up to primary this guy. Um, yeah, there's, uh, in Wisconsin, there is somebody trying to, yes. Unfortunately, McConnell won his last election again. But uh, this guy is ancient. And every time I see this guy on TV, it looks like a guy that's got one foot in a grave. Either to retire or just go away. And uh, who knows? I have... I have no idea where this goes after that, but, you know, that's my opinion. Buddy, I appreciate your radio show. I love it. And uh, thanks for hearing me out this morning. I'm down here in Atlanta listening to you. My my pleasure. Thanks for giving us a call. Call again anytime. Okay. Have a great weekend. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. I will. Thank you, Ron. Well, you know, he, he gave a very good point about uh, the rally. Uh, look, you know, these, what am I, I know if I, if I give Trump kudos, everybody thinks that I'm going, that I'm a, that I'm a Trump supporter and that I can't be clean and honest about it. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you the facts. Look, I firmly believe that Trump, not that he wouldn't be successful as a, as president, but I think the people that he would have the most trouble with would not be the Democrats. It would be the, re- the Republican leadership. And I think that is true of Cruz as well. Cruz would all, his biggest enemies would be within his own party. And if Rand Paul were somehow elected, it would be the same for him. His biggest enemies would be from within the Republican Party. It wouldn't be the Democrats. And that's sad to say, because the, 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 the opposition party, the, tr- the party that is supposed to be the true choice or alternative to the Democrats, in the leadership, as far as the leadership of that, of that party is concerned, 
They're not any different. They're not. And I think that's what a lot of Americans, especially uh, uh, Republicans, registered Republicans, and those who've left the party, I think that's what a lot of them are just totally ticked off about, which is why you see outsiders. uh, You know, the American people in general are ticked off about the insiders, which is why you see these outsiders and nonconformists like Cruz, Trump, and Sanders on the uh, Democratic side with such huge support. This would not have happened 20, 30 years ago. Unbelievable. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Sign him up for the Box of Bait Club and he'll never be hungry again. The Box of Bait Club is a brand new dream come true for every fisherman. Something new and different in your tackle box every month. Every month, another excuse to get outside and do what you love. Don't let this one get away. The Box of Bait Club is currently accepting a limited number of pre-orders with subscriptions starting at $39.95 per month. Find out more now. Log on to boxofbaitclub.com. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on washing and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich, working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare, having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to freedom133.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to freedom133.com right now and change your life today. That's freedom, the number 133.com. Go to freedom133.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to (laughs) freedom133.com. Attention business owners, we know that owning a business means getting things done right now. So if your right now list includes a new building, call the right now company. General Steel. We can design a building for your business quickly and save you thousands of dollars. That's right, thousands. You may think General Steel only builds large projects or that you can't afford General Steel quality. Well, check these prices. How about a 40 by 60 foot building for under $22,000 or even a 50 by 100 for under $35,000? That's right, a 5,000 square foot building for under $35,000. And these buildings all have General Steel quality. Best of all, you can still order a building and have it delivered in time to build this year. How's that for right now so if your right now list includes a new building call the right now company general steel 800-393-5756 800-393-5756 800-393-5756 that's 800-393-5756 
Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800 595 2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595 2614 to take your call now. Call 800 595 2614. That's 800 595 2614. Again, 800 595 2614. Uh, boy, man, I had a rough night's sleep. Uh, boy, Whew. I got a letter from the IRS yesterday, and I, I just couldn't sleep. Man, my, I'm dying here. Somebody help me. IRS problems affect more than just your finances. If you're ready to take back control of your life and you owe more than $10,000, you need to call the tax doctor. Their expert staff can immediately protect you from the IRS and state collectors and get you the best possible tax settlement guaranteed. The IRS has recently released new programs geared in helping struggling taxpayers, where you may qualify to settle your tax debt and wipe out up to 85% or more of what you currently owe. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, call the tax doctor right now. See if you qualify to pay less. 800-989-1694. 800-989-1694. 800-989-1694. Again, 800-989-1694. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Welcome back. Hour number three on the fastest three hours on Internet Talk Radio right here on the Rod Echo Show. As we kick off hour number three here, which is Friday, January the 29th in the year of our Lord, 2016. It's Friday, making it Freedom Friday, which means it's Open Mic Friday for those of you who want to know something a little bit different. We get to celebrate our weekend here on the, on the Rod Echo Show. And we try to keep things a little bit on the lighter side for you. Just so we have, yes, a good time going into the weekend. Uh, the number that you can call to join is 603-835-3224. Again, the join-in, call-in number, 603-835-3224. Look, you've got it. You've, you, you, last hour you had um, a, a caller who is who says that he's undecided. And that he's still open. Apparently, he's open to all the candidates. So if you've got a candidate of your choice, your favored candidate, then maybe you should try to to honestly convince this person, this voter, because he's not alone. Uh, and depending on the state and depending on the poll, you have as many as half the voters who are still at this late juncture undecided. Now, who knows how many people who think they have decided, but they could be persuaded to support somebody else before they pull that that primary vote or that or or that caucus vote. I don't think any anybody really has anything sewn in the bag. I, I know some people are thinking that Donald Trump is this huge juggernaut, but I don't I don't think any candidate has it all sewn up. And I think if you're a support, the the people who can 
convince other people the most, the best, the easiest, uh, that their candidate is, is the best one possible, is themselves, is the regular, everyday person. Because everybody expects candidates and 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 uh, and you know major people in in the in the candidates' campaigns to to be political. They expect them to always tout and exaggerate the positive of the candidate. Everybody expects that, but when it comes from their neighbor, well, that's when people really pay attention. When it comes from their coworker, that's when people really pay attention. When it comes from people who call up radio shows or who write uh, um, uh, editorial pieces to, to the newspaper, editorial letters to the newspaper, who, who, who give a, a, a thought uh, while being interviewed on the man on the street on TV or on YouTube, those are the people that have the biggest power of sway. Those are the people that your friends and neighbors and family and coworkers are listening to. They're not listening to the politicians speak as much. Sure, they want to hear the politicians speak. Yes, they want to see debates. Yes, they want to hear what they have to say. They want town hall meetings and all that kind of stuff. That's true. They do. But what really convinces them, if they're undecided, if they're having a hard time deciding, is what other people who are like them actually think. You would be surprised how easy it is for a liberal to get an undecided conservative purse friend of theirs to vote for one of their candidates, and vice versa. It happens all the time. Now, frankly, there is no possible way that I would listen to any of the Democratic candidates and be persuaded by them. But I gotta tell you, I, I've talked to people who are who are Bernie Sanders fans. And listening to some of them talk, I'm like, well, maybe they've got a point about some of Sanders' positions. Now, later, of course, I think, no, they're absolutely, they're absolutely nuts because they just don't understand economics. But it is how persuasive your friends, why are your friends and your coworkers and your family members persuasive? Because you trust them. Why is it that people who look and think like you on a daily basis, your average fellow middle class citizen, why do you why are you possibly swayed by them more than anybody else? Because they're like you, so you think, so you trust them. That's why. And you folks out there, especially, you know, you I can't say that about Trump, but all you non-Trump supporters, you think it's best the best thing to do in order to get people to support your cause is to bash Trump and otherwise keep silent about your, your candidate. That is not the best way. I don't know how many times I got to tell you. The best way is for you to be talking to people. That's the best way for you to convince the undecided people and even some people who think they've already decided to switch to your candidate. Plain and simple, you can't be silent. This is not this is not a battle of silence and it is not a battle of wits. The person who gives the wittiest comeback line or the or, or, or the the wittiest slam, you know, kind of like, you know, who who gives the who says the who has the best uh, mama jokes. No, that's not gonna be the person that wins people's votes. Sorry, it just isn't. You know, you think you can have the greatest zinger in the world. But you know what? At the end of the day, that's all it is. It's not a vote. And it's not going to garner you support. So try to be as witty as you want. You're not going to get win any support. Plain and simple. I don't, you know. And if you, if you claim... Let me just be clear. I don't want to I don't want to hear or see any more about me being biased. When you do not call. I have given I you know I, there are people that have tried to slam me for this and I don't know how many times I have given them the phone number to call in. Call in the program then if you think this or that or or the other thing. And still not a peep out of them. You know what? You're being proven to be the the idiots that you are. 
If you want to claim something, you better be able to back it up. So, you know, well, Rod doesn't take calls from anybody else. Really? You have, have you called? No. Well, then how do you know if I take calls from somebody else? You haven't even tried. It's just, I, this is the kind, this is what I'm talking about, stupidity. Especially from left-leaning people. They think they're so smart. You know, I love the people that think they're smarter than everybody else. They think they're, so, yeah, they're going to smart themselves into an early grave. Really? Because they think they're just so dang smart. It's kind of, you know, that that song, what was that song? Early, early 2000s? I'm too sexy for my shirt, too sexy for my shirt, too sexy. I think. They should change the sexy part to smart. I'm too smart for my shirt, too smart for my shirt, too smart. Because that's really, that's really the the point. Because people who are, well, you know, what do we think about sexy people anyway? If they're, if they're good looking, they probably can't be that smart. What do we always say about good looking be- Man, especially women. What do we say about women? Brains and beauty? Man, that's a great rare combo. Why is that a rare combo for a woman to be good looking and smart? Because it's hard to find somebody who actually is intelligent, who doesn't think they're smarter than everybody else. I get it. It's not just about how their face looks. Beauty is not just about how your face looks. It's about your personality. And there are some there are some very ugly people who look very good on camera. Just saying. Maybe that's why men think that that's such a rare combo. You ever come across a, uh, you know, well, I'm not going to try to be sexist here, but I, look, I've played the game. You, you got it, most of the time you got the absolutely gorgeous woman that knows she's gorgeous. And she's what guy? But guys, back me up. You go to the you go to the bar. Uh, you go to the nightclub. You know we all played this game when we were in our you know our early twenties, college age. You get, and you find this girl that you think is absolutely adorable, absolutely gorgeous, and you try to talk to her, and they usually don't even give you the time of day. Now, granted, half the time they won't give you the time of day is because you've tried to approach them with some stupid, lame, really dumb pickup line. Got it. But even when you don't, if you just walk up and just want to say, I don't know, you know, you get you, you walk up to a girl and you say hi and they give you the look as if you've just broken every possible law on the planet. And most guys are like, I'm sorry, and they slink away and go hide in their cave again. Now, I understand, you know, ladies, that ladies, that you if you're a good looking woman, you probably know it because you've been hit on so many times and you've heard every single lame pickup line in the book. I know you have. That's why I don't use pickup lines unless I'm trying to be funny. Which usually falls flat, so I don't use pickup lines. Just <laughs> just saying. Guys, if you're using pickup lines and you think they work, stop it. They don't. They really don't. If you want to meet, and this goes for ladies too, if you want to meet somebody that catches your eye, that you think, oh, well, man, I'd like to meet them, just walk up to them and say one word. Hi. That's all it takes. You don't need some lame pickup line that you say th- because some pickup artist guru told you that that works every single time. It works none of the time. Trust me on this. It doesn't work. Just walk up to somebody, be natural, and just say hi. If they say hi back, there might be an interest, and you might be able to get a conversation started. Just say hi. Wait for them to say hi back. Introduce yourself. That's it. Just give them your first name. That's all you got to do. You don't got to say, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, you know, 
Rodney J. Philippine Eccles Esquire. What? Don't give him all that. Just hey, you know, just give me a first. Uh, hi, I'm Jimmy. And if it's appropriate, reach out your hand while you're saying that as if you're going to shake their hand. You'd be surprised how many people, how often they reciprocate. And they just say, especially girls, you walk up to, hi, I'm Jimmy. And you reach out your hand to shake their hand. You'd be surprised almost 100%. Well, isn't nothing works all the time, but almost 100% of the time they will turn and look at you and say, hi, I'm April. Or they'll at least say hi, even if they don't give you their name. And then just be honest and genuine about it. You don't need a pickup line. I mean, that's just dumb. I know, but there are guys out there that think, no, Rod's wrong, man. Pickup lines work because they work for me all the time. No, really? No. You're going to end up. Ladies talk. There's a ne- Ladies have this network. You will be, if something doesn't work for you anymore, the reason why it doesn't work is simply because the, the, uh, the lady hotline, there has been a memo dispatched about you and they'll tell everybody they know, they'll tell their two friends and they'll tell their two friends and so on and so on until everybody in your town knows to look out for the guy who uses this pickup line or that pickup line. That's the reason it doesn't work, you idiot. (laughs) All you got to do is talk to women and ask them. You'll find out all kinds of things. Just talk to them like a human being. Right up front, you'll find, even, even if you think they're an airhead, they will tell you all kinds of things that are absolutely true that goes on in their world. It's amazing. It's called conversation. And conversation doesn't have to be real conversation doesn't have to be forced. Just a little bit of dating advice from yours truly here. Now, if you want to learn how to be married for 50 years or 55 years, like my parents were, I'm not the guy that can tell you that. No, I can. No, I, I have I'm not married for 50 years. I don't, I couldn't tell you, but I can tell you what works when you're trying to, when you're, when you're single and you're trying to uh, quote unquote, pick up somebody. And I can tell you what doesn't work simply because I've probably tried. I've probably bought, but I bought books before, you know, before there were online courses, I bought books on how to pick up women and how to be a ladies man. And I, I'm embarrassed to say that stuff, but that's what you do when you're 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. You read that kind of, and none of that crap worked. Just saying. None of it, none of it worked. <laughs> How many guys out there have actually done that? Uh, there, there's one of the biggest things online today is uh, is these guys out there claiming to be uh, a pickup artist, and they can teach. They, they, they what is um, Hutch, uh, the Will Smith movie Hutch? Remember that? They're claiming that they're the real life Hutch. Like there is no such thing. Just they they understand what really you're the only male in the entire history of men that fully understand women then if, if that's the case and you wouldn't be hawking your your wares on an internet website for 47 dollars if you really understood women i'm just saying what is it what is it no um what is the price now you, all this stuff that you get i get this stuff constantly in my inboxes i mean it's just it's it's insanity what is uh, the, the popular price? $97 is the popular price. That, that seems to turn. 47 and 97 seems to be the two numbers that turn people on the most. Or, or 19. Now, I get all this for $19. What is, somebody, somebody sent me something the other day. Like, yeah, uh, for, for you know, how to get rich on, on marketing, on, on using other people's stuff or something like that. You know, where you, you, you use ClickBank? Yeah, ClickBank. They're going to teach you how to make $100,000 a year on ClickBank, and it's only going to cost you seven bucks. I mean, if I could read, if I could actually slap these people who do this stuff, who send out these emails, I would. But the problem is, is you know what? They keep doing it. Do you know why they keep doing it? Because it works. So I'm telling you, it doesn't work. 
They're not going to give you secrets for $7 or $47 or $97 if it's worth a hundred grand. They're not going to do it. All of that stuff in those books and those e-courses that teach you how to pick up women do not work because if they worked, those guys would be too busy, too busy with all of their women. They wouldn't have time to promote and, and run a website. Think about it. If they're sitting there chatting with you on a Friday night about how their lines work, what the hell are they doing home? If it worked, they'd be too busy. It doesn't work. Just talk to people. That, that, that goes for all the politi- uh, you politicals out there. I don't care what level of government you are. If you're local government, uh, state government, or federal government, just talk to your constituents. Don't talk down to them. Don't avoid them. Don't give them some stupid political lines because we all know what a political line is. Believe it or not, most of the time those political lines, guys and gals in office, they do not work. We don't believe you. Just talk to us. Just walk up to us in a town hall and say, hi, I'm your representative of this district. Blah, blah, blah. Great. Hey, how you doing? I got something I want to talk to you about. Instead of, you know what, listen to me because I am your representative. This is what these people are telling us, really. You're not smarter than the rest of us. Hell of anything, if you're running for, I'm going to say, if you're running for political office, most likely you're probably more foolish than the rest of us because the smart people have decided that they don't want any part of that nonsense. That's what I'm saying. High-tech homeless man in Detroit accepts credit card donations on a cell phone. Can you believe this? This is from CBS Local in Detroit. Volunteers in Detroit and across the nation spent the night counting the homeless, because they they have to do this one-day thing by law to count homeless people once a year. Uh, so uh, So they spent the night counting the homeless, and one of those men who lives in the cold... Uh, is dealing with it in a unusual way. Now, he calls himself Honest Abe. His real name is Abe Hagenston, H-A-G-E-N-S-T-O-N. And he panhandles not just for pocket change, but for the donor's credit and debit cards. He accepts cards with a reader attached to his phone. Now, if you give a bum, a homeless person, or anybody on the street, anybody, I don't care if they're homeless or not, anybody on the street without knowing who they are and without trying to buy a product or service of theirs, if you give them your debit card or credit card, you are an idiot. Do you realize, well, they have to be checked out. Do you realize you don't have to be, you know, what is it, Square? They give you these readers for free. All you need is a cell phone with an internet connection. That's getting really cheap too. Even a homeless person obviously can, can afford a, a cell phone with an internet connection. How crazy is that? And now, now, <laughs> you t- hey, hey, all, I guess they're taking away because how many times has, uh, has a beggar come up to you and say, can you spare some change? And you probably answer like I often do because, and, and it's the truth because I rarely do. I don't carry cash. Well, now they'll just, I think I better stop saying that after reading this article because now all they got to do is say, well, great and pull out their cell phone with card reader and say, you want to make a donation with your credit card, dude? And they're going to expect you to donate more. I <laughs> Look, these people are getting smart. You cannot, yeah, well, you can't blame them for trying, but you could say that they need to get a, get a job so they can take care of themselves. But I guess it was bound to happen. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, uh, um, well, he li- actually, this is this is kind of interesting where this guy lives. Uh, his name is Abe, and he lives, his home is um, on the I-75 overpass of 8 Mile. 8 Mile. And, uh, you know, he's, he's saying that, look, this is, this is, uh, this is something good for the homeless. Um, so 
if you don't even have to, you have to worry about some, well, you know, they, they don't have to go into the bank and pay a fee or uh, to have all those coins tabulated then. All they have to do is, and then they can walk into a store. Now, they can they, they can walk into anywhere, you know, try to clean themselves as best they possibly can. And people won't think that they're bums because why? Because they're going to whip out a debit or credit card to pay for whatever it is they're buying. And nobody's going to think, well, he can't be homeless. He's got a card. Homeless people don't have credit cards, right? Of course not. Nobody thinks of that. Nobody thinks a homeless person has a credit card or a debit card. Because that means they have to have a bank account. Homeless people don't have bank accounts. Well, evidently, you know, Abe, Abe does. Honest Abe has got a bank account. I just, well, I guess we're getting to that age. Just think about it for a second. This is, this is the age of electronics and, and, uh, and virtuality, if you will. Who knows? Maybe what we're going to start seeing is, uh, is not real panhandlers out there, but virtual panhandling. On January 21st, 9 p.m., controversial international rapper-songwriter Corey Preem will be performing his latest single, Blend But On My Mama, from his latest mixtape, There's Heaven and Then There's Hell. Hip-hop royalty will be in attendance, and a special guest is expected to stop in for a performance. It all happens at the Jerome at 85 Avenue A, New York, New York. Tickets just $15. Say Blame It On My Mama at the door to possibly win a free pair of Samsung Oculus Rift virtual reality glasses. Visit CoreyPreem.com for more information. That's C-O-R-E-P-R-E-M-E.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. And then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on washing and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800 595 2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595 2614 to take your call now. Call 800 595 2614. That's 800 595 2614. Again, 800 595 2614. 
Start training for a new career in as little as 18 days. National EMS Institute's innovative boot camp program will train you for a new career. Learn to respond to emergency situations and become a certified EMT in just 18 days. National EMS Institute guarantees 100% job placement. Visit www.nationalemsinstitute.com today to learn more about our 18-day boot camp. Or call us at 1-800-497-6732. National EMS Institute. Com. When you're ready to take the edge off a hectic day, I suggest you start with a little music from Franz Black. I guess there's lots of ways to look at things that don't seem right. No Worries has just been released no on worries. iTunes and Amazon. It's gonna be alright. You can find Friends Black and his music on his website, friendsblack.com. F R A N Z Black.com. It's gonna be alright. Six zero three eight three five three two two four is the number to call as we enter the final segment for today and this week. Hey, that's kind of a feel good story about the homeless being able to use high tech uh, high tech gadgets in order to garner um, uh, donations, if you will. You know, high tech panhandling. Yeah. Well, if, if that gives you a feel good type of sensation, how about this one? Literally. Um, if you just go to a, a, AP, uh, AP.org, um, Associated Press, they've got a piece in here by Mark Thiessen and Audrey McAvoy, M-C-A-V-O-Y, or is it McA- McAvoy, McAvoy? Um, in any case, the title is Want to Feel Better? Yeah, everybody wants to feel better. It kind of goes along with what I said about this particular state in the past. Well, if you want to feel better, uh, no, don't move to New Hampshire. Uh, According to this article, don't move to New Hampshire. But move to Hawaii or Alaska. Yes. Uh, If you want to improve your sense of well-being, leave the lower 48 states. A new report ranking all 50 states based on residents' sense of well-being, puts Hawaii at number one, followed closely by Alaska, which held the number one position last year. So last year it was Alaska and then Hawaii. This year it's Hawaii, then Alaska. Um, Hawaii has been number one in the poll five times since 2008. Alaska and Hawaii are both beautiful states in their own way, but distinctly different, said Dan Witters. Uh, research director of the Gallup Healthways Wellbeing Index. Well, of course they're different. One is like nearly paradise all the time, and the other one is like freezing cold all the time. Well, I guess it depends on what people consider to be paradise, right? Some people love the cold. They love snow, so I guess Alaska would be their paradise. Uh, one's, oh, great, then fine. Uh, one's a one's a sun sun and warmth loving paradise the other is an adventure and snow loving paradise there there you go so you got you got your choice of two paradises uh that are absolutely on the top of the list as far as well-being rounding out the top five were montana colorado and wyoming i've often said maybe uh if it comes to it look you might have to move to montana you know, people in Montana are probably nuts anyway. That's where we got the Unabomber. Uh, you know, that's... I've never been... I would love to go see Big Sky Country. I have not yet been to Montana. Love to go to Montana. Wait, it wasn't Mont... Um, what was that? Uh, a Brokeback Mountain, wasn't... Didn't that take place in Montana? I don't. I don't... Isn't that with Heath Ledger and uh, what's the other kid's name? Well, he's not a kid anymore. Um, 
they were these cowboys and ended up being on the range. I don't know. They were on horseback. So I get, when did it take place? So they, were there, I don't know. They were supposedly cowboys. Um, what were they? They were, I didn't see the movie. I'm just trying to remember what the whole thing was about when it first came out. Um, they were cowboys, obviously. Or maybe they were are ranchers. Maybe they were ranchers. Uh, they were ranchers or cowboys. They rode horses, so one or the other. And I don't know. Was it in the was it the eighteen hundreds? No, there were cars in it too, so it couldn't have been eighteen hundred. I don't know when it took place. I don't know anything about the movie, so I'm not going to talk about it. But did it did it not or did it or did it not take place in Montana? I just asking the question. That's all I was trying to get at. I have no idea. Uh, this, see here, you're gonna. I'm gonna tell you when I don't know something. I don't know any. I didn't see the movie. I don't know anything about it other than what I heard from the advertisements, and I saw them sitting on horses. So I'm assuming that they were either cowboys or ranchers. That they were they were herding sheep or cows or pigs or I don't know cats for all I know. I don't know. Uh, the survey listed the bottom five as Indiana, Ohio, Oklahoma, Kentucky, and West Virginia. Isn't Rand Paul from Kentucky? Isn't Kasich from Ohio? My only question is, is where is New Jersey in this? <laughs> I Not saying that Rand Paul is a terrible candidate, but uh, there's Kentucky. He's at the bottom of, of, of the list, bottom five. Um, Kentucky's been number 49 for the past seven years. West Virginia has been 50 for the past seven years. That's that's a terrible rate. Uh, that's that's a that's a longevity score that you don't want to have to be considered by the people who actually live there to be uh, bad for your well being. Can't be good for tourism either. Now, what do they look at? the The, the ratings are compiled from questions to residents related to five big areas with a variety of topics. You know, purpose is one. Um, do you like what you do each day is one of the questions. Didn't I just say you should be doing something that you like? Evidently, I guess people from Virginia and, can, and uh, uh, Kentucky don't like what they're doing. Uh, social, do you have loving social relationships? Maybe people in West Virginia are trying to use too many pickup lines. Community, do you like where you live? Maybe they don't talk to their neighbors and coworkers or spend any time with them. They're all held up, you know, playing video games and watching Netflix. Financial, are you managing your economic life to reduce stress? Maybe the people of West Virginia, more of them than not, hate their jobs and don't think they're getting paid enough to do that kind of crap. Uh, physical, how's your health and energy? Maybe they're the ones that are suffering more from heart attacks Sunday, 6 p.m. through Monday, 6 a.m. You know, I didn't plan any of this show. And notice how this one story just encompasses everything I already talked about. I, amazing. These are just, <laughs> just, fact, just facts of, of, of life here is what I talk about. And this article this study goes right in there and says that you know hawaii hits the hits the mark for many people including a person by the name of danny kwan who's a taxi uh, kwan q u a n uh, who's a taxi company owner and driver who said he likes the water and surfs a lot he says he has no complaints about life in hawaii is he an uber driver or a um lyft driver is there, are there other ride-sharing services out there? The, the ones I know about are Lyft uh, and Uber, Uber being the bigger of the two. Um, I, and I know there's, there's, a, there's a few delivery service sharing services out there. Um, what, uh, was it called Dropbox or something? Lyft, I don't know. Um, there, there are people in Boston that are, that are claiming they're making $100,000 a year or more by participating in the sharing economy with their vehicle now i don't know if it's true or not uh they, they claim that they that they that they work for or drive for uh these various 
companies that utilize their 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 car in some form or fashion. Now, now think of this for a second. If you think this type of thing doesn't work, if you don't think Uber works or Lyft works or any of those uh, you know those delivery services, think about this for a second. These people that do this, but most of them say they enjoy what they're doing. They get to make their own hours and work whenever they want and whenever they don't want. Works just about anywhere that those types of services are allowed to be utilized. You want to think, do you realize that you can now move just about anywhere, even if you don't want to be on the internet, you know, create a job on the internet. You can now move somewhere, most likely, and do something to make a living in that area. You know, driving for Uber and Lyft might be one of those things. You could move You could move to a suburb that, that's close to a major metropolitan area, drive for Uber and Lyft and those other services um, to make a living. And you don't, you don't have to go through a job interview. If you're already able and capable uh, and, and meet the standards of those, of those companies, you can go anywhere and perform those services. Now, think about this for a second. Uber is the world's largest taxi company. Basically, that's what they are, a taxi service. The world's largest taxi service. And they don't own a single vehicle. You have some of those package delivery services now. I, I can't think of any, any names. I think one is called Dropbox or something. They're growing faster than UPS or FedEx did. And yet they don't own a single diesel guzzling truck. Think about that for a second. So people always say, well, there's nothing I can do. Bro. There's plenty you can do. These companies got started because somebody decided to think outside of the box. They decided, hey, what if, what if I could give somebody who wanted a ride a ride and charge them a little bit for it? Uh, instead of having to go through the taxi and be, you know, and have to deal with mean taxi drivers or, or dirty cars, what if, I, what if I had my own car? And in my car, I could offer somebody a ride somewhere and they would pay me a small fee. You know, we just meet up. To, why not? Two private individuals coming together and saying, yeah, I, could you give me a ride? I can say, yeah, yeah, I'll give you five bucks if you do. Great. The government doesn't like that, of course, but these people thought outside the box. Airbnb. You know, I've got this beautiful home or this vacation house. It just sits there. Why do I need to have to depend on a real estate agent and pay this real estate agent all kinds of money uh, just to market and, 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 and do that kind of stuff to get somebody into my, my vacation property when I'm not there. Why can't I just do it myself? Somebody thought of that and said, why don't I just put up a website that advertises my house, my vacation house, and maybe some friends' vacation houses, and we can rent it out ourselves to people. Maybe lower the price a little bit and, because, you know, we don't have to deal with the real estate agent, and we, still, and we get to keep more of the profit. What if we do that? And boom, you know, now there's a couple of, uh, of, of these types of Airbnb types of sites. You know, there are places that, it, places that it probably won't work. I mean, I'm not sure I'd want a, I'd want a, uh, a sharing economy airline. But there are lots of places like something like that can work. And there's still opportunity. Maybe there's something out there. Uh, think outside the box that somebody hasn't already done a part of the sharing economy, as they call it, that you could come up with and do. You might be the, you know, the next, uh, the next big Uber. I don't know. And you could live anywhere you wanted. I love how people say, well, I got to go where the jobs are. Well, why don't you just create the job where you want to be? And if you, if you are the type that feels that you have to work for somebody else, do you know that a lot of times when somebody gets a job with a company, that person creates a position within that company. They suggest it to the employer. Hey, 
you know, you th I think you might need a person who can do this, this, and this for you. And they convince the employer that they need somebody like that, and that person is the person who just suggested it. You know how uh, that happens more often than people even know. I mean, I, I've, I've seen it. Somebody comes in and says, you know what? You don't, do you have anybody who does this for you? And then, you know, the hiring manager says, well, no, we don't. And they start pointing out why it's a good idea to have somebody who can do that. And they think, you know, yeah, well, let's see if we can do something about that. And a position was created and developed and they hire the person who suggested it. Try that. Try suggesting something at your at your work that you want to do. That kind, try suggesting your ideal job to your employer. All they can do is say no, but you'd be surprised how many times they might they that they would say yes. Try it. If there is a position in your company that is not covered by anybody that your company doesn't have, Try suggesting it and then convincing those who have the power to create it and hire for it why it's a good idea and will be advantageous to your company. Do it. And I bet you if it's a good position that's an honest, solid position, I bet you within the next three to six months, you will have it. And then you will stop being worried about going in every Monday and hating it and dreading it. You're going to like it. I'm just saying. By the way, if you don't want to live in certain places, you don't have to live in certain places. Did you know that there's still some people who are snowbound from the storm early this week in D.C.? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know. You know. Government, government town. Even the, even the, the, the world's biggest government city. Well, that's all Washington, D.C. was meant to be. It was meant to be the capital. It was meant to be the government city. That's all District of Columbia. That's why they didn't want it in any of the states. They carved out this square section of land. And they said, this is the District of Columbia or the capital. And I, I, don't, I don't even know why they even said D, uh, District of Columbia because it wasn't even part of Columbia. It's just, that's, you know, that's an urban legend myth. It's never the case. But in order to make it sound like it was something different and not a part of, of, of Maryland or Virginia, uh, they said District of Columbia. This is Washington, D.C., Washington, District of Columbia, the capital. That's all it was meant to be. It was meant, it was kind of like, you know, the days of old back in the Pharaoh days and, and uh, in, you know, ancient times and um, they, where they would build a city for their government. Well, that's what Washington, D.C. was. was. It, just, it was built to be our, our government. That, that was for our government. That was it. It wasn't meant to really house people and, and be, a, a, be a modern city. It was meant to be the governmental center of the country. Well, you got people who are still snowbound. In a, in a city of government officials, they can't get the job done of clearing the snow. How, how difficult is it? You know, and probably, uh, you know, well, hey, you're also dealing with the, with the city itself of D.C., so that, that's, the federal government isn't charged with uh, dealing with snow emergencies. That would be the city government, uh, by the way, whose boss is the federal government, uh, but it would be the city government who has to deal with it. And I would say that they better get their little acts together before the federal, the federal people um, get upset. And start calling for heads to roll. Cause after all, you know, you guys don't, you know, you're, you're just, you're peons on the lower, lower ranks. You don't, you don't count at all. Here's from The Telegraph, telegraph.co.uk. From their lifestyle and beauty section. Oh, maybe, I don't know why it's in Britain. This actually works. They really need to, they'll make a mint here in the United States. But they're, supposedly they've come, they, they've had a, um, a, a sensual breakthrough, if you will. A scent of, 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 Grand proportions. Perfume that promises to make you thin. I kid you not. Uh, Primois is the name of this. P-R-E-N-D-S. So if you're going to say it in, in English. Prens moi. Well, moi would actually be moi. Prens, P-R-E-N-D-S. 
moi, uh, M-O-I. And it's by Velds of Paris, Paris. Uh, a pleasant blend. It's made of a pleasant blend of bergamot, mandarin, lilac, and lang lang. This innovative zesty floral fragrance is also uh, it's pretty pleasing side effects. It, um, by the way, of weight loss and appetite curbing. According to its creator, Primois, which translates in English to take me from the French. Um, so they say it will slim with pleasure. Now you're probably thinking, what are you kidding me, Rod? Are you? Yeah, they're saying it. I, I, they're not telling you how to use it in this article, but evidently you spray this stuff on you. Uh, it'll, it'll cause you to lose your appetite i suppose um so if you lose your appetite that means you don't eat as much and if you don't eat as much you're going to lose weight so my question what the hell is in the if it smells that good doesn't don't, don't good smells make you hungrier are you telling me that good smells make you less hungry i think good smells make you hungrier <laughs> but, so there well Look, this is, you know, Friday the Freedom. I told you, bring your lighter half the, the stuff. By the way, Bill Clinton's approval rating is down. Yes, it's way down. It's terrible low down. Bill Clinton, which is, uh, you know, every time we start to see Bill Clinton on, on, the, uh, on, the, on the stump out there trying to stump for Hillary, he kind of doesn't go full and all out like he used to. Because that's his, that's because his approval rating is has plunged to less than thirty nine percent, and that's from Breitbart. Uh, Clinton used to have a very high approval rating in po- his post president. This is unprecedented for a president's post president presidential uh, run uh, for their approval rating to plunge like this. There has to be some reason. It's all going to be due to his wife Hillary. Who, by the way, the FBI says that at some point she has got to be ind- indicted, whether it's now or in the fall. Well, I say now wh- rather than fall, because I, mean, I don't think it'd be fair to the Democrats to nominate this idiot, this 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 woman, and uh, and and go through the entire presidential process only to indict her where she can't be where she can't be elected. And that's just not the uh, try, uh, the FBI does not take sides, by the way, in, in politics. They don't. They don't particularly, I mean, well, I mean, they know that they're going to get a new boss, but they, they don't, if anything, because they're, you know, the FBI director is usually appointed by the president anyway. Uh, you know, they're going to want somebody who's thinks more like the current administration so they get a better chance of keeping their job. So that would mean that you would not want to indict Hillary. But you have to understand the FBI is that governmental organization that still stands mostly for doing the right thing. They do. I know sometimes they get a bad rap. They just got a bad rap for the, uh, the, the Oregon thing. But as we learned, the FBI didn't shoot at the, uh, the ranchers that were holed up. It was the local sheriff's department and state police. The FBI just filmed it. I guess there's a, uh, there's a video of the shooting. Uh, that was shot by the FBI that they released. The FBI didn't shoot him. And, but, you know, you know, of course, though, if the if the if that guy were black, they'd be demanding uh, Jesse Jackson and Reverend Al Sharpton. We would be demanding a, a DOJ investigation into civil rights abuse for shooting the guy. Evidently, the guy was reaching for his gun. Now, when I originally heard that he was laying face down on the ground, this, you know, put his hands over his head and he laid down on the ground face down and they shot him. Well, it seems like he was laying face down with his hands over his head after they shot him. And they shot him simply because he was apparently reaching for his weapon. And he was known to have said that they'll never take me alive type of thing. And now, uh, now that since eight of them have been arrested, one of them had been killed, including their leader, has been arrested, uh, Amon Bundy, they, that the rest of them feel, well, I guess the gig is up. We're going to get out of here. Um, rightfully, you know, they, they, they have a rightful fear that they think that the feds are going to come in with a raid and, and shoot everybody up. And that, that, you know, they have a 
decent fear to feel, uh, you know, reason to feel that way if they want to. I'm not going to say that they, they don't. Look at what happened at Ruby Ridge in Waco, Texas. Under Democratic president, by the way. The, these, these major types of events on Americans didn't happen under Republican presidents. Remember that. Just remember that when you go to the polls. We didn't have Waco or Ruby Ridge. Well, those are, weren't those both under Clinton? Uh, maybe I'm, maybe time has flown by so, fi, uh, so fast, so far, that I can't remember exactly when they took place. But they did take place. And they were federal government. And people remember that kind of thing. And they don't like that kind of thing. And they get scared of that kind of thing. Anyway. Well, that is a going to wrap it up for not only today, but for the entire fabulous, wonderful, fast week. Have a great weekend. We will return on Monday, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, the week of caucus and primary starts. And we'll talk all about that leading up to your primary. I'm Rod Eccles. Enjoy Rush and Hannity up next. Until Monday, have a great weekend. This has been the Rod Eccles Show. I'm out.